don't care if you can risk your life for the Spider-Verse all night. If you up, smash that like button. Welcome to Black and the Black Times Infinity. I'm your host, the TV Spider-Man coming to you live and direct from the Vista. Smoke me out there with all that dang shit on my left over the end of the world on this. Uh, the great Robin Williams once said, there's not enough love in this world. So turn to the penguin next to you, fluff him up a little bit, and give him a great big hug. Damn. On my far right engineer on the ones and twos, talk people out on the threes and fours, Kronos. I got boosted. I'm waiting for my superpowers. I'm just saying. Hopefully. I think it's just extra dankness, to be honest with you. So. Uh, it's 6G. You get 6G. 6G. All right. I get all the Gs. <laughs> Last but not least, we got your boy Blue. Everybody wants a big booty girl until you have to constantly replace your toilet seats or tighten your toilet seats. <laughs> Damn. Oh my god, I got a funny story about that in a minute. <laughs> Damn. Actually I can just tell it now. Fuck it, because we're just starting. Um mm -hmm. talking about uh larger ladies or people with big asses or whatever. There was a party that I had in my old place, like in Escondido, California, and one of my uh friends' new wives um was a little bit larger. And she broke her toilet seat. Didn't say anything. The fuck? Literally broke her toilet <laughs> seat. Didn't say shit. Like, Damn. Damn. All right. Did you like break crack? the... Like crack? With like the... Like, like broke broke it. Like, yeah, shit, we had to, like, buy a new one. Damn. Was it, like, just a seat part? Or was it, like, the tank? Or was just it, like, the, the bowl? Just the, just the, the, the uh, part you sit on, like, you know. Oh, okay. Not the whole toilet, just Damn. the toilet seat. Yeah, yeah. There's, a, there's a trend going around right now, like big booty girls and have to tighten the, the toilet seat all the goddamn time. <laughs> it's all fun and games. Oh, yeah. shit. All right, give so us some if you, if, So if you got a if you got a big booty girl, go check your toilet seat right now and see if it's loose. Because if not, you need to go back there and just tighten those two little bolts. <laughs> tighten it up. Right, tighten up, <laughs> <like a> Lucy. <laughs> what yeah. statistics we got for us? All right, listen of the week would be uh, Funky underscore ZH. Thank you very much for listening. And first in the chat would be Crispy Crawler. What's going on, fam? Good to see you back in the chat once again. All right. I like that username. That was pretty dope. <clears throat> the the listener one? of the week. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. Funky ZH. <laughs> All right. Old Ninja, you usually pouring out something. For what you pouring out for whom's to do? Uh, I'm actually not pouring out anything this week. Uh, maybe a little eggnog, but I guess we want to push back a little bit on one of the last people, R.I.P. Oh, I, mean, yeah. I forgot about her. Um, so last week, you, old ninja, and this is not your fault or whatever, because I wasn't familiar with it. wasn't familiar it wasn't with his it. fault either. It was my yeah. fault. Yeah. Uh, Bell Bell Hooks, I think, was the the woman. Uh, she's an author, feminist, and mm -hmm. uh, you were talking about. You know, she passed away. I, I don't wish her any ill will in terms of her family and passing away and everything. But man, you know, Twitter uh, alerted me to the fact that she was a real piece of shit when it came to oh, men. Yeah, and she said the wildest foulest, nastiest shit like an actual white supremacist uh, against the Central Park Five and black men as a whole. I mean, I can pull up the exact quote, but I really don't want to even fucking repeat it on air. She was extra foul, and from everything I've searched, she never backtracked on it. She never recanted. Um, it, she wrote it in a book from the 90s, one of her books, and folks were quoting that tweet, uh, quoting her book uh, quite a bit last week. Again, I didn't know who she was until she passed away. Same I said here. R.I.P. like the rest of everybody. But once I learned about that, I was like, "Fuck this, busy." It Dude. was it was some real cunty fucking quotes that she had. And again, never forget that the Central Park Five were completely innocent, rickrolled, you know, by mass anti-black men hysteria in New York City. And we're completely innocent and went to jail. And there's a whole movie about it, uh, or actually a, a drama series uh, by Ava DuVernay called When They See Us that, uh, that goes into a whole lot of detail about it. But fuck anybody who's talking shit about uh, the Central Park Five. 
and just going at black men in general in terms of yeah. mythology and demonizing black men for nothing. Fucker. <laughs> yeah, when I saw that, that tweet show up, I was like, hold on, because we talked about it last week. I, I just looked to see what kind of books and stuff she had. I, like, I didn't see a photo of her. So I looked her up. I was like, this old white lady talking shit to me with this bitch. Like, oh, fuck, she's black. <laughs> mm-hmm. I was not I was not prepared to see. I was like, wait, wait a minute. She doesn't like her own kind. Like, what the hell? And, like, the shit that she said was, like, even after the fact, even after the fact that they were found, like, not guilty. She was like, well, you know, they're, they're those types or whatever. And I was like, holy shit, like, this chick really went, went there with that. Uh, I actually have her quote here. Uh, she says, quote, no one can truly believe that the young black males involved in the Central Park incident were not engaged in a suicidal suicidal ritual enactment of a dangerous masculinity that will ultimately... Uh, oh, shit. Yeah. Good job, Sorry. Sorry, Sorry it, didn't, it didn't load all the way. I thought I had it, but... I mean, still, who... Who... Who actively goes into a suicidal ritual? Would like, you like what? me to, to actually say the whole quote? Yeah, if you could, because it's not, it's not finished enough. <sighs> this is what you said about Apologies. the Central Park Five. Okay, no one can truly believe that the young black males involved in the Central Park incident were not engaged in a suicidal ritual enactment of a dangerous masculinity that will ultimately threaten their lives, their well-being. If one reads, again, Michael Dyson's piece, The Plight of the Black Men, focusing especially on the part where he describes the reason why many young black men from gangs, the quote-unquote, you know, the sense of absolute belonging and unsurpassed love, it is easy to understand why young black males are despairing and nihilistic. And it is rather naive to think that if you do not value their own, that if they do not value their own lives, they will value the lives of others. It is really so difficult for folks to see the connection between the constant pornographic glorification of male violence against women that is represented, enacted, and condoned daily in the culture and the Central Park crime. So, yeah. This is... Um, th- <laughs> everything that you just said, it's, it goes back to like... Oh, I can't remember the name of that fucking that that old ass movie, but it's basically like the fear of the black man that we're gonna come rape all your women, and do all this this and that. When like, it's pretty rare when you look at like actual statistics of like a black man raping a white woman. It's 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 pretty birth rare. of a nation. Birth of a nation. Birth, yeah, was, birth of a nation. Yeah. Where you had that dude dressed up and you know he was super black face. Black face. Raping white women and it's just you know they they just keep espousing to it when you have people that are misguided like you know bell hooks's opinion was about how we're all basically the same we're all just doing these things it's in our nature it's like what if we said the same thing about black women and said anything like discussing like that about black women you know it, it would not be excused today so that's the reason why we're not excusing what she said now and it's sad that she passed away but she said some really fucked up shit and didn't uh, didn't go back on it. this is the same central park five that uh, former President Donald Trump took out a full-page ad uh, in a newspaper to talk about, how, basically, to give them the death penalty, these five underage kids. Um, and yep. they, did, they didn't commit the crime. And he, is, he also has not gone back and said anything that he did was wrong. So I put him in the same boat as, fuck you and your couch. And, and to quote Stitch, fucking guilt of... It's to the moon or, or to the sun, yeah. You know, hey, just a, one quick point of order, um, and this is me being kind of a stickler, but it's for a good reason. They would like, they being the central, the, the five, would like to be known as the exonerated five. And I'm all in favor of that because, again, oh, yeah. they didn't commit any fucking crime. And, you know, they, they're they're innocent men. They're older than us, actually. You know what I mean? They're almost as old as old ninja, you know? Ain't nobody, but, nah, they ain't know those mean. <laughs> but, you know, like, yeah, exonerated is a, a great way of describing the fact that, you know, again, innocent people. Um, and just because they were black men, automatically viewed as guilty, criminal, evil, violent, rapist, and all this other terrible stuff. And this, this woman had the audacity to put it in a goddamn book. So, no, I'm, we're not going to celebrate her. We didn't realize it last week, but yeah, fuck her. 
understand. So anyway, <laughs> on to <Okay>. the weather. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think we alienated all one of our uh, Bell Hooks uh, fans. I mean, yeah. maybe. They'll have to say, but there, you need proper context. Okay, I mean, <laughs> you can put it in context if you want. But um, yeah. there, there really isn't, especially given the fact that she didn't really apologize for it at all. And she disparaged a whole group of people. Um, yep. like kinda, white folks do. So, yep. yeah. And kind of jumping back to Donald Trump, like there was a, on the New York Times, there was a, somebody had asked him a question about the whole Park 7, or Park 5. Central Park 5. The, was it? No, the, inside, what, what did you, what did they want to go by? They want to go by exonerated. Exonerated 5. Uh, they talk about that and Donald Trump still back up his statements. Like, are you serious? Like he doesn't want to apologize for the ad that he paid out for it. Yeah, and, and, and this and was this was this article from or this this report from 2019. Yeah, look, and let's be really crystal fucking clear. The only reason why he didn't want to apologize for it is because this is black people. These are black men. That's it. If you disparage, you know, uh, another group, you know, you're gonna pay a bigger, bigger cost politically and socially. But it, it's fine to say this kind of bullshit about black men, and I'm fucking tired of it, man. It's just, it's uncalled for, um, and, you know, it's even more disappointing that this is, again, from an educated author that's a black woman. Like, what in the entire fuck? Don't you have any uncles or fathers or brothers or sons or anything? You know, you're just going to throw everybody in this same fucking uh, bucket and yeah, it's just, it's foul shit. And, you know, you don't have to be, nothing about your ideology of feminism should be anti innocent male. It just shouldn't. But here we go, just dipping into this shit of, you know, let's use, again, white supremacist talking points to uh, dial home this evil, fucked up point that, uh, yeah, they're all criminals, they're all evil, they're all rapists, they're all violent. Fuck everything about you bitch yeah i'm glad i'm reading of her fucking books <laughs> fucking cunt anyway keep going <laughs> wait, wait, what's the name, wait, what's the name of the person from uh from um mr robot the asian guy who uh fucking pissed on that oh <laughs> yeah. fuck oh, white, white rose white rose yeah, yeah. Oh, white rose to 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 make a little pipe a little potty squat <laughs> that shit was so god that scene was so fucking epic <laughs> Just chit chat and drop draws and just piss on someone's grave. My favorite thing about my favorite thing about uh, BD Wong was he was more intimidating in a fucking dress pissing on somebody <laughs> than he was. Was in, in a, a suit. suit, yeah. In a suit, he wasn't too menacing. But when he was white rose in that white dress, I'm like, oh shit, some fucked up is about to happen. You couldn't tell him nothing. You know what's crazy? <laughs> so like you know how people say you know don't speak ill of the dead. We don't do that shit here. Like if you, you did some really fucked up shit and you didn't. Um, correct it in your lifetime like you had your whole lifetime to fix it and you didn't so we might talk some shit after you died and uh yeah there's some shit that i said that's we'll, we'll probably all of us have said in our lives that are kind of fucked up but we've changed our opinions on a lot of mm-hmm. stuff so uh and yeah if i if i if i died and something i said was fucked up i'm dead i wouldn't really care if you speak spoke ill of me so uh yeah what you said was fucked up and she didn't correct it so fucker yeah, and then I mean we 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 talk about uh Nancy Reagan on here too, and she, <laughs> Deadpool, yeah. wow. she, she was doing the work she did wrong. She was doing God's Wait, work. She, she was doing God's say work. Her, wrong. Say her name right. Bro, go. <laughs> oh damn. Damn. Man, we oh, should man. start off fucking dang. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man. I mean them off couches. <laughs> I, I actually I, I give out as 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 much shit as she was getting. As far as Nancy Reagan, a lot of people were like, well, dude, she was out there living her best life in the 50s, I guess. I mean, she was single at the time. So, I mean, she did earn a reputation according to the unauthorized book, but it's not like, you know, she was killing people or anything. She's, no. you know, helping people yeah. bust. I'm so, fucking slipping Spanish flies yeah, and quailos and people. Let's, let's not give her too much leeway because, I mean, her and oh. her husband did a lot of fucked up shit to the black community, so... Oh, I'm oh, talking yeah. about, totally I'm talking about before, here. but this is before uh, she was in office. Before what she did in her entire lifetime was fucked up. Yeah. And so yeah, she she helped him do some dudes bust some nuts, but she also had to do a lot of uh, young black males getting thrown in fucking jail for minor drug crimes. So. Yep. Um, 
and 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 let me just be really clear i gotta say this one last time you know <laughs> because it's all implied and everybody's kind of hush hush about it but if you're on the mgm lot you know and known as a throat goat you were fucking groupy that's that's what the fuck you were you know what i mean mm. at that time you were a young groupie on that lot because you were nowhere near as famous as all these other MGM directors and actors that you sucking off. But, yeah, I mean, I, I, I'll focus on more of the policies and, and, and things that she did uh, as First Lady and then when she was the First Lady of California and whatnot. But, yeah, I, I'm going to still right. always call her Throat Goat. That shit was hilarious. I don't know how I missed that book from, what did you say, 91, Old Ninja? 91, 91, 92. Yeah, it was old I mean, news. 91, 92, we were like not even teenagers yet. So yeah, yeah. we're on the precipice. But yeah, ha- had I had I known though, that would have well, been some funny well. shit on the playground. Most of us hadn't <laughs> yeah, even busted no. nuts yet. Damn. I'm just saying, most of us hadn't even yeah. busted nuts yet, except for maybe old ninja because he's like 45 million years old. Just saying. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, he was still I mean, I would dusty nuts back then. <laughs> yeah, I would say uh, I look at it from a different angle. I mean, I I look at it. As she was doing what she could to remain relevant because she mm. apparently she wasn't a good actress back then and she wanted to be an actress so in order to get roles she had to do what she got to do so yeah, nobody know. likes to admit that so. yeah but that's fucking gross too so yeah <laughs> i mean that's i mean that's some weinstein weinstein whatever his name is that's yeah name. shit right there yeah. so that, that's disgusting yeah. yeah we're talking we're talking early 50s yeah, so, I know, but it was still gross. That and, nah, that was that's old school Hollywood, and and it's even not even old school Hollywood. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say even new school. That's that's always been there. All right, All right. goddamn. All right, so the, <laughs> no RIPs. <laughs> <laughs> Where are we going first, guys? Oh, uh, if we want to keep it dank a little bit, this isn't. I thought I put this on here. Uh, but did y'all hear about this? The PlayStation executive who got busted. Oh, I heard about this. You heard about this? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So I I think he's British, but I'm not 100. percent But what he did was stupid. His name's George Cock. Oh, well, you you blank uh, it out. P a c i o p p o. I don't know how to pronounce that one. One more time. He's C a c i o p p o. So uh, he's 64, senior vice president of engineering at PlayStation. This fool was on Grinder, trying to hook up with the 15-year-old boy. So he didn't know that the the, the person he was talking to was a decoy. Huh. And there was a YouTube who live streamed it. It's a channel called People vs. Preds. He was live streaming. Maybe you really a fucking new internet, man. Yeah, you're in a tripping, dude. It's. I think it's the mic. Hang no, on. it's not the mic. Ooh. It's your whole video. Yeah, you're freezing up too. The. My whole video froze. I have serious questions. First of all, how the fuck does a 15 year old get on Grinder? It's not. It was a. It was a decoy, claiming to be 15. But why would that? Why would that even be on? I mean, obviously the guy fell for some shit, and he's disgusting, but. That shouldn't even be possible on these dating apps, like having somebody underage on there. I feel like there's a whole bunch of things that went wrong, or just entrapped a dude that was probably gross to begin with. So, well, I mean, the guy, I mean, the, anybody can lie on Grinder and say they're they're of age, but then like turn around and say like, oh, I'm actually 15 or whatever. That sounds. I mean, but if you do that knowing that it's fake, that's serious entrapment. I mean, it's gross that the guy want to do that, but. I mean, legally speaking, that's like some. <laughs> that's really fucking yeah. nefarious. Yeah. So I mean, he sent. Apparently, he sent uh, pictures. Uh, illicit, you don't have to, you don't have to describe all the crimes. Photos. You really don't have to describe his disgusting <laughs> crimes. <laughs> so, but I, I want to make sure I, I I say this though. So, if it's like the Fed, the FBI did this, basically a sting or something like that. Red yeah. I, was it? Well, they're a group of people on YouTube. They're called okay. People vs. Preds. So, hold on. I'll say this: expose all the fucking pedophiles possible. Like, fuck, fuck them and their feelings. I, I, I'm with that. Um, damn though, if he if he's a senior executive at PlayStation and doing this, I am almost 
fucking positive that some foul shit has also gone on that, you know, has been unrecorded that he's done all throughout his life. Because remember, at, you know, almost every single PlayStation event, <laughs> you know, there's probably been underage, you know, or teenage young, young boys. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, that's, that's disturbing and fucking wild, man. But is he arrested now or no? So the thing is, actually coming for, like, underage kids to be on this app. Like, I'm reading a couple Ryan, articles so of, like, well, they're not supposed to be on there, but, I, like, there's articles on here talking about it. They, hmm. they really so I will say is he... Go ahead. Well, it is, it is unclear if he will face criminal charges because they're not, they're not, yes, because he was exposed by a YouTube group, but they're not of law enforcement. So they just put him on blast about what he was doing, which. Damn it, your internet. Um, <laughs> if, well, cause... if he's not, if he hasn't been, like, if, there, if law enforcement ain't going to do shit when there's documentation of him at, at best being interested in underage boys, with, you know, with, again, screenshots or whatever, or DMs or whatever, then fuck. Like, <laughs> What hope does and do we have for preventing pedophilia? What uh, what country was this in? Was it? Oh, the U.S. This is in the San Diego oh, area. Okay, <laughs> California's a whole lot. Because I was looking up, I was trying to look up the age of consent. Because I know like some states are like sixteen or whatever. California is definitely eighteen. Damn. But like Colorado was fourteen. What? The fuck? what? Some of that shit is just wild to me. I didn't know what the fuck is even going on when I was 14 years old. <laughs> I thought I knew, but I didn't fucking know. No. Yeah. And imagine a, a grown 30, 40, 50 year old person coming up to you at age 13, 14. You know. Uh, yeah. 64. 64. Dude, six, okay. Six, he's, he's 64. That's like almost six, t- less than five times his age. Yeah. Um, or maybe a little bit less, but god damn. That, that's, like they, that's like fucking your grandfather. <laughs> So what? So is PlayStation doing a goddamn thing? Like, are they? Yeah, he's fired. He's fired. No, they fired him. Good. God damn. In a day, he was fired. Yeah. Yeah. Don't do not pass go. Do not collect two hundred dollars. I hope they didn't give him no golden fucking parachute or no shit. I feel like there's things that definitely should break the golden parachute, but obviously there are things that aren't. That don't at all. That are like probably not as egregious, but definitely stealing a bunch of money from people. People just get yep. going parachutes. So, like they they can fuck up and do like really fucked up things and still get millions of dollars and they're fine. You know, you know. Look, speak, speaking of like shitty ass fucking people, is that uh, uh, what's her name? Uh, Epstein's girl? Is she still on trial? What the fuck happened with her? Yeah, she's still on trial. God, God that trial ain't getting enough fucking attention for me. Like what that's the because fuck? a bunch of people that. They're they've called out like a whole bunch of people that are like high profile people. That's why they're keeping it out of the news because the, the news they know who pays the bills. And it's, yeah, it's, man. It apparently, it's gross <laughs> pedophiles. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Fucking shit. Like that's to me that should be like one of those trials that you know gets around the fucking clock coverage. Cameras in there and shit. Like you know, mm-hmm. but that ain't gonna fucking happen. She, she should have been over quick too. But this has been fucking like years because Weinstein like. Killed himself allegedly. <laughs> what? what, like two years no, ago? Epstein, 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 Epstein. Okay, yeah, he yeah, he killed himself like what two years ago? I think. But a while, so if, I'll, I'll if he was on trial, he died. But that motherfucker didn't kill himself for shit. Mm-hmm. So bad. I think it's George Cassiopo is how you pronounce his last name. Pretty sure. Is it Cassiopo? Pretty sure. Not sure. And I'll but... put a A on the end of that. Oh, God damn. Mario! Speaking of... Speaking of languages... He's a version of that in jail, provided he cheats charges. Dude, speaking of languages, like, I learned that with Italian words, like, if it ends with an I, that's, like, the plural version of something. So, like, spaghetti is plural, but, like, if you just have, like, one spaghetti strand, I guess it's just called... It's called spaghetto. Like, if it ends with yeah, if it ends, if it ends with the O, it's a singular. But if it ends with the I, it's plural. Well, what about spaghettios, motherfucker? Well, so American. spaghettios would be spaghettio. Spaghetti. <laughs> spaghetti- <laughs> what? It's the uh, it's the Halloween version. Spaghettios. 
<laughs> yeah, like spaghetti. Wait, how do you pronounce the 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 chef on the can? Blue for spaghettios. Chef Bo- Chef Boardy. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, I think it's I'm very curious now. I, I thought he was going to say Chef Boyardi. <laughs> Boyardi. <laughs> it's going to go super wow. races against uh, I'm gonna say Italians. Humbardi. <laughs> I still can't. I, it's a tangent, but I, I still can't believe what fucking Chris Pratt is going to be Mario. Is that like legit news? <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't really I don't really care. I mean, that just seems weird to me, man. I don't know why Chris Pratt gets like, I don't really care about Chris Pratt. I mean, he was cool as, uh, you know, Star-Lord or whatever. And I don't know. People talk like shit about him, and I don't. I don't really. I don't totally understand. I don't. I guess I don't know much that much about him. I guess, but he was cool. Well, I know Star Lord. So I know there was some shit about. Like he was dating some girl, and like cheated on her with somebody else, and then turned around and got back with got with that girl. He was. Uh, like a dog, he was married was to. A, a he was decision. married to Anna Ferris, and then yeah, he. Anna Ferris. And then he was messing around with Arnold Schwarzenegger's daughter. I mean, you know, got a dirty sprite taught us all. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah but I, I think what uh, okay, the guy who played the voice of Sonic, like, that he kind of, kind of, because I, for me, growing up as a kid, Steve Urkel was the voice of Sonic. Uh, Jamil White was the voice of Sonic. And, like, seeing Sonic be played by another voice was, was really weird. But, I don't know, I, I dig it. He did a pretty good job. They, 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 they nailed it. it, at least to me, in the movie, it, it felt right. You know what I mean? I want to mm-hmm, see more mm-hmm. of those movies. Oh, we got two coming out. The trailer was fucking dope. We got uh, yeah. we talked about it before, but Idris Alba is playing uh, Knuckles. Knuckles. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm fucking down. Like, Sonic Who needs was, your power? Was a nice, uh, pleasant surprise, kind of. So. Well, considering that they listened to the fans, because that first original trailer that it dropped was garbage. It was boo boo garbage, and they, they definitely fucking fixed, that shit. fixed him. They spent the money and yeah. fixed him. I'll never forget that. I like you that. You know what I mean? It's like the first time that trolling actually worked. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, we all way. collectively said, this is going to be hot fucking trash. I'm not supporting it. They fixed it, and then it was actually pretty pretty good, actually. You know what I mean? And, it worked. And it, yeah, and it made money. Rightfully yeah. so. Yeah. I mean, I, I saw it. I think that was actually the last movie I saw in the theater before COVID hit. And then it, they released it, like, digitally, and I, and I turned around and bought it digitally, too. So, yeah, I really enjoyed that movie. I'm looking forward to the sequel that comes out. And Jim Carrey's back again, which mm-hmm. is he going to Jim Carrey it up, but he actually looked pretty funny in the in the second one. But we'll see, we'll see. Uh, you know, I like Jim Carrey being Jim Carrey. You know what I mean? Like it, it's it still works. Like ever since Living Color, you know what I mean? <laughs> Let me show you something. Oh, this is it's a funny story. Uh, if you go back and watch uh, Liar Liar, there's a scene where um, where Fire Marshal Bill is in it. Fire Marshal Bill's in the in the background. So Jim Carrey reprises his role as Fire Marshal Bill and he's like in the background as his character. And it's like it's a real subtle thing. Like I was watching something about like all of Jim Carrey's like achievements and stuff like that. They they brought that up as an Easter egg. I was like, dude, that's fucking great. <laughs> like that's that's such a and it's like the 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 scene is when um when he like tries to save his son or he be, try to meet up with his son on the airplane, they're like flying or whatever, and he flies off whatever. And uh yeah, one of the fire department persons is uh Fire Marshal Bill. Hey, ne- shout out to the Wayans. Never forget they put him on, and they like they nailed the fucking uh, like casting. Almost everybody on fucking in Living Color was hilarious, but obviously mm-hmm. he blew up more than almost anybody except for well, I guess maybe yeah more than even Jamie. But you know, more than even who? everybody they put on that show was awesome. Who are you talking Jamie about? Fox. Oh, Jamie Fox. Is Jamie Fox. Yeah. Jamie Fox was a yeah. fucking DJ. It wasn't even a goddamn act. He was a DJ on the show, and he yeah, at first, out. at first, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then he started doing skits, but yeah, he, Gene he Fox is like, up. he's like a, he's like super multi talented. Like the dude can act, the guy can sing, and he's fucking funny as hell. Like his stand ups and shit is it's, it's always been on point. But I don't know, just the fact that he went from from being a DJ to being such a big, I mean, he's almost falling the uh, Will Smith's uh, kind of mo. You know, start off with music and you know get into TV and then blow up in the in the big screen. But I mean, Will Smith is on a whole different level, but. Kind of the same realm. Yeah, but I think Jamie Foxx is more talented than Will Smith. I'm just going to yep. say it. Um, yep. Also, Jamie Foxx is hilarious because he does shit on the budget, even though he's rich. If you ever listen to like, <laughs> the Joe Rogan experience when he was on there, he was talking about how he would do uh, parties on like super cheap 
and he would mm-hmm. be like instead of like having like a uh, super caterer coming to his house and like cater everything he would just buy a bunch of like mcdonald's or kfc and like you know not spend a bunch of money on parties and shit like that so yeah he kept it reasonable yeah, I think he, Donald Trump took a page out of his book for, for <laughs> <laughs> for the college kid. Yeah, yeah uh, he bullshit. talks about it on Snoop Dogg's podcast where he's like, he's arguing with P Diddy on how he spent like thousands of dollars on on some party, and he's like, man, that's not how you do it. So I can throw you a party for four hundred dollars, yep. and it'll be hit. And so he put it together, and he said it was like livelier than than Diddy's twelve like thousands of dollar party. It was pretty funny. But it was pretty awesome at the same time because he literally broke down. He went to Costco, bought a bunch of like cheap shit, bought fucking liquor, and boom, that was it. Yep, yep. Uh, so, I mean, do y'all want to get into a movie that Jamie's been in? Like y'all, right? Or I haven't seen it. Seen? I've seen. I think I'm the only one that's seen it. Which way you, you about? Can you do? Can you do spoiler uh, free? Into the Spider Verse. Uh, no way home. Oh, I got shit to yeah, do. Yeah, I haven't watched it yet. <laughs> got to talk to my Aunt May. I mean, can I can, I can no. wait. Yeah, I mean, it, this one's hard to do without spoiling stuff. So, I'll definitely have seen it by next week. Yeah, that should be fine. I'm about to it's definitely See, worth is... seeing. What yeah. really sucks about this is that, like, like I, I, I like watching a lot of YouTube videos. Like, I, I rarely watch like real TV or whatever, but I watch YouTube videos and like. Like the night that the show the the movie dropped, like motherfuckers are already dropping spoilers, and it sucks with like YouTube. What they do is they'll show like clips of the YouTube video, so like you see clips of them showing stuff that's from the movie, and it's like fuck, man. Like why can't people just goddamn wait like at least a couple of at least forty eight hours before you start spoiling shit? And then like the the Tyler of the episodes too will say something about the movie, like oh what happened, blah 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 blah. Oh, we gotta have Stitch on here because Stitch has a a oh, rant Fandango. like yeah when he was buying from Fandango, Fandango spoiled something for him, so it's all bad. Yeah. Wait, I, it, on the website, the, the website Fandango. Yes, yes. When he bought his tickets, he had something spoiled for him while buying it. He told me what it was, and I was like, "That's fucked up." He's all so he when he's back on the cast, I'll have him explain. You're gonna have him explain shit. He's still pissed <laughs> about it. It's awesome. I wonder when it's gonna become the Disney Plus. Is what I want to know. Uh, I don't think it's coming it's to Disney Plus. None, well, none of the other Spider-Man movies are on there. So. Yeah, it's Sony. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's right. I mean, you're I more when likely when it's gonna be on PlayStation. On. Come on, Sony. <laughs> Damn. The PS5 can do 4K or 8K. <laughs> can you do 8K? It does, right? it does all the Ks. I'm oh, sorry, not all. Yeah. It only does two Ks. Definitely not a third. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, tell me about you get further in Death Loop. Yes. Well, okay. This game, it's uh, it's kind of fucked up because, like, I'm playing it, and then I keep going through like my loops. I'm just like, oh, there's more information on how I can do something better. Oh, I'm like learning more about like how to do this, this, and that. And I'm like, so now I'm just really trying to find like the perfect the perfect loop and every single time I'm trying to get to the perfect loop, I'm learning like more and more on like how to get more than one person in the same room so I can kill them both. And that's the main thing is like, I could probably on a difficult level beat the game right now. Probably gonna beat it a while ago, but I'm trying to do it in like a really efficient way. Like I know I was missing like some, a thing called a slab, which is like kind of like your superpowers. And like one of the, like the final boss guys, he has it. And I was like, well, you know what? I'm gonna just gonna. You can only get it at night, and, w- and at night it's like the hardest because there's like a lot of uh, a lot of fucking goons out. So like, you know what? I'm, I'm gonna try to get this this fucking slap, t- you know, at night. And I got it today, and holy shit, I probably killed in this game. I usually don't kill more than like ten people on like sometimes maybe a little bit more, but like when I'm going through any given level. But on this one, I had to kill probably mm, close to like fifty people. And I was just like, damn, because I, I couldn't stop because they kept finding me. I kept, kept having to murder them. So, yeah, and I, I killed the guy, got his slab, but I was just like, man, I had to kill a lot of people to get this fucking thing. And I know, like, where I kill the guy, I'm setting up the events to where when I kill that guy, there's somebody else that I need also in the same room. So I have to go back in the same situation and kill, like, 50, probably 100 people 
to kill two of like the main people at like the end. So we'll see how that goes. But yeah, it's like it's like really good. It's like a it's like playing Clue, but you murder people, and it's like it's it's really good. I can't wait for one of you other guys to to play the game and and hear your thoughts because once you get like past like the initial like learning curve it gets it gets really interesting you just want to learn more and more about the story and like why are you stuck in this loop how can you kill all these visionaries in one night you know how can i get better gear and all this other stuff like you get really invested in the story and stuff so yeah sounds like it's one of your favorite games of the year it uh it is and i you know i have guardians of the galaxy which i really want to play and phoenix rising um, but this one is still, like, I just want to get that perfect loop to, to, like, kill everybody. I keep getting, like, better and better shit. Like, I thought I had, like, the gear that I wanted, and then all of a sudden I got, like, this, I got, like, an SMG where I, if I shoot somebody, it gives me life back. I'm like, that's pretty cool. And then I finally found, like, the gun that I found in, like, the, in my, I think my second or my third loop that I played. Um, I found, like, this badass gun where it's, like, two pistols, and you can put them together, and it makes an SMG. And it shoots in, like, three-round bursts. And it, like, just fucking murders the shit out of everybody. But when I first got it, I couldn't infuse gear yet, so I couldn't keep it. And so now I figured out a way to go back and find it again. Because you, you can only find it, like, at a certain time of the day at a certain spot. And I got it. And now it's, like, part of my inventory. I'm like, fucking yes. And I upgraded all the way. And it's, like, it's a really good weapon. So, yeah. It's good shit. Yeah, it's complicated as fuck. It's, <laughs> like it's co- it's sort of every time you die, you lose. It kind of it kind of brings back that old school fucking man, that like old school game style. Where, like when you die, you gotta like start back over from the beginning. You don't have any like uh, I want to say Dungeons and Dragon, but not really. But well, like, well, you don't have to start over from the beginning. So like, I mean, you start over from the beginning, yes, but you can when you get gear, you can infuse the gear with this like element to like make sure that everything that you infuse with an element. When you die, you, you keep it. So mm. that makes it like way more fair. But before that, you were fucking. <laughs> yeah, I was just like. It's just kind of hard. Like, people are fucking me up. So, but once I figured out, like, hey, there's like ways you can like survive once you infuse your gear and, and get through this, then then it becomes fun. Then you can kind of you can kind of run around. I still sneak around and try to stab people. And then when shit hits the fan, then I start murdering everybody. That's like typical, you know. Uh, spy style, right? Once you get caught, you just fucking kill everybody. So, mm-hmm. fuck it. That's, that's old school. Fucking uh, Metal Gear Solid. What's that kind of exclamation that's mark? And, you yeah, know, man. I heard that sound. It was like it was murder, murder time. And they have that. Like they only have the exclamation points and a sound. It's not not the Metal Gear sound, but there's definitely a sound that goes nice. along with it. You're like, fuck, they got me. And then they have like the, the music. This is another thing that's really cool is the music. So when somebody finds you. And um, this is how you know, like, people are still, like, searching for you. It's because the music, like, amps up. And you hear this mm-hmm. music. And then once everybody's gone, like, once you basically murdered everybody that's around you, the music will die back down in, like, a, a nice little crescendo. And it's, like, it's really cool to hear the crescendo. You're like, all right, I'm good now for a minute. So. I don't know why people always underestimate just how great uh, video game music can really be. It, like, sets the tone you know, so well, you know what I mean? Like, obviously we talked about Doom Eternal plenty of times, but when that music fucking hits in a game, it's like iconic and it enhances the experience so much. Yeah, so. I think uh, Doom Eternal probably does it the best out of like any of the games that I've played in like yeah. a long time. I mean, Metal Gear Solid does a good job too, but uh, like, but that's only with like, the sounds, not, probably not the music. Except for like, yeah. I guess Snake Eater. Snake Eater had a fucking dope ass soundtrack. Sure did. But uh, Doom Eternal, like, the way that they amped up music to, like, amp you up to, like, go murder fucking demons. <laughs> Nobody's done it anywhere near that yet. There's a new game called, like, Death Harbinger or something like that, where basically you have to kill things to the beat, and it's all metal. And it's the first one oh, sure. Um But, yeah, Doom and, and, and Doom Eternal, those fucking soundtracks and the way that they, like, come in and, like, just get you amped up to kill things. If y'all haven't played Doom or, Doom or Doom Eternal... The, the most recent ones um, for the PS4 and, and, you know, the new generation. They're, uh, they're excellent games. Like, if, if, you play, if you play that game and you don't get amped up, you're probably not fucking alive. Mm-hmm. Just saying. Find some joy in your life. It should be that game. <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah, I'm fucking, yeah. All right. Uh, we lost Blue. We did. But, um... You can still hear us, though, because he, he has a trip. Oh, yeah, that's right. Wait, so, yeah, I got to talk about them. So... 
probably one of the best games uh, audio is from uh, fucking Super Mario Brothers. That dun 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 like when you get into yeah. the fucking dungeon area, <laughs> like you know you're in fucking trouble because you got the dun 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 music playing. But what's so great about the old school Mario game is that uh that music haunts you to this fucking day probably. Like as you play the game for like a good couple of hours, you don't. It doesn't matter where you are in the world. That music is still fucking rocking in your head. And, and another one, you know, it's obviously a puzzle game, but fucking Tetris, man. You oh, know yeah. that yeah. song. You can hum that shit right fucking now. You Dude, know do I mean? you, you know how many dubstep and EDM fucking versions of fucking Tetris there is out there? That it's shit, ridiculous. That shit slapped hard as fuck, man. I feel like on, Russia, man. like, really missed an opportunity by, like, capturing the American, like, mind. of just They could have just slipped in. A whole bunch of like really subtle communist shit into the soundtrack of <laughs> Tetris, and people would have got on board with that shit. I'm just saying, <laughs> it was that big of a hit. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> you know that shit was fucking brilliant. You know what I mean? Yep. Shows love mother Russia, Russia on there or some shit like that, and people are like you know what you know I don't see anything wrong with Russia. <laughs> you could could have just said it backwards. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, <laughs> love love your comrades. <laughs> Oh, did you know that if you play the Texas soundtrack backwards, what you fucking hear? <laughs> <laughs> you know, that shit doesn't even make sense in the digital era really all that much. You know what I mean? Like, play, I mean, play I music backwards. backwards? Some people still do vinyl, I get it, but, you know. like. Well, I mean, fucking, um, what was it? Missy Elliott had that one verse in her song where she actually fucking rides backwards. I forgot about that shit. Or it's played backwards and shit like that, like. I probably, it probably was like a couple of years ago when I, re- like, I realized that she was actually saying flip it back and reverse it, but they played it backwards. And I was like, what the fuck? That's nice. That shows genius. Yeah. Hey, by the way, um, I tried to turn on G4. Like, have you guys watched this channel anymore now? I, I need to, but I, I, I watch it on YouTube for like okay. yeah. things. But it's weird because when I try and watch like Attack of the Show, it's like a three hour stream. I'm just like, is it really three hours? That's yeah. I just want to watch. I just want to watch it. We're saying it's too long, but this podcast is usually over two hours. Um, but yeah, I'm sure. like, <laughs> you know, I, I just want AOTS and like the normal segment. But I, I have to, I have to watch it. But I've definitely watched X Play for mm. a bunch of reviews, and, and the reviews are much longer now, which is fine because I mean Adam Susser is, um, he's a gem. Really, he is. is. He's great. I loved him. I always will. Do they still have Morgan Webb on there too? I haven't seen no, any. No, I mean that's that's kind of sad, but I mean, if she doesn't want to do it, she doesn't want to do it. You know, I mean, Adams, you know, Adams there, and he wants to keep doing it, so I, I am there for for him. But yeah, if Morgan Webb joined him, I would definitely be happy about that. But there's another one. I, th- I forget her name. There's another. There's like two other people that do it with him. But he's. I really, I really loved Morgan back in the day because like she was kind of unassuming. You know what I mean? Like she wasn't super jokey, but like she yeah. knew her fucking shit. Yeah. You know. So it'd be nice to kind of see what she's doing. But again, you're right, Cronus. She didn't want to be a part of it. She's moved on, doing different things with her life. It's all good. But she, she was, was a tall drink of water. She was, <laughs> actually, you know what? It, you know what tall. it really was? She's yeah, she really wasn't all that tall. Sessler's just that short. Hmm. You know, no shade to him. But like, when you yeah, see she, her in real life, she's not yeah, that she's tall. Yeah, five seven. Yeah, which is, I mean, it's a a little tall for a, for a woman, but not I mean, not that tall. Yeah, on TV she looked like she was six five. Yeah, but, I mean she was, she <laughs> yeah. was but she was wearing. No, wait, uh, wait, wait. But Adam Sessler's six feet tall. Yeah, Adam Sessler's taller than her. Then, yeah. then that was some TV magic. Something weird well, was going on. She was wearing heels most of the time. Yeah, she must have been wearing like huge heels, some stripper heels. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right. Well, anyway, in the fucks, uh, old ninja, you still wait? Wait, quick oh, thing. Uh, I well, I guess yeah. G four kind of well, not it was before it was G four. It was was it Tech TV? Yeah. Yep. yep. The Tech TV by G four. I can't remember how it was it was but um, yeah, and that, that originally were based out here in San Francisco because um, Adam Sessler is actually from Berkeley. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think Morgan Webb is from like San Francisco or something like that. Something like that, yeah. Uh, so wait, no, she, uh, she went just to, says she's from LA. She went to Berkeley too. Okay. Yeah, she had a school in Berkeley. Yeah. Okay. I don't know what. What about Olivia Moon? I think she came. She came in after the show, though. Yeah. You, the funny thing about Olivia was you knew she was a goddamn star and too fucking almost too fucking gorgeous 
for the whole channel. You know what I mean? Like you would be watching and you'd be like, oh, she's going to be gone next week. Like she's just going to be this huge Hollywood star. Um, but and she obviously became bigger than almost everybody. But she was so fun yeah. on Attack of the Show. She was because she's got him. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, she was quirky. That was the thing. Is like we all knew that she wasn't necessarily the, the nerdiest woman you know, on the planet, but she still had like some quirks about her, like the whole pie thing and like other shit that just like made it work. And yeah, I, she was definitely a, a welcome addition to the show. And. I, I feel bad because, what was her name, Candace, shit, Candace something. Oh, uh, man. The girl who replaced her was like Candace uh, Bailey, Candace Bailey. Bailey, yeah. Just yeah, wasn't yes. her, you know, yep. and no, I, I had no real problem with her, but, you know, I just like Olivia Munn more. But the, the crazy thing about Olivia Munn is that she came up just like uh, uh, Kevin Pereira did. So both Kevin Pereira and uh, her they were not stars when they first came on the network. Like yep. Kevin Pereira was on like the versus. What was it called? Like the it wasn't versus. The he was on a screensaver. Arena. No, he was on. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he was yeah. on Arena, and then uh, Olivia Munn was on like a driving show. I think I forget what the fuck it was called. It was like it drift something or something. Cars. Or... Yeah, something about cars. So it was cool to see them both like work their way up, you know, G four and like become stars. I mean, obviously Olivia Munn more than Kevin Pereira, but yeah. Dude, if you want to see something that still works to this day, go look at that gif of fucking Olivia Munn eating like a hundred fucking hot dogs. Or fit them all in her mouth. That shit is fucking hilarious and hot as fuck. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> what's, what's kind of cool Good. is that uh, Olivia Munn's got a movie coming out where she's like the head, like the star of, of the movie. I can't remember what it's called. I think it's called Violet. No, that's not Violet. It's something and it looks pretty fucking intense. Dude, Violet? She should be a fucking movie star. Like, fuck you to uh, Fox because her Psylocke was fucking trash, but it wasn't her fault. They didn't no. give her enough to fucking work with. Yeah, you know, they you gave, got, she barely had any lines. I know. Like, that fucking sucked, man. She definitely had the look down. That's what I mean. Yeah, she did. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, she and did. supposedly she put a whole lot of uh, time and effort into, like, you know, the sword training and you know, the doing the martial arts classes or whatever, just to, to have the look, like the movement. Like, <laughs> but it didn't it didn't work for the movie, or they cut it from the movie. Yeah, it's pretty awesome, because she, she goes off on her sword twirling skills like on uh, Twitter or Instagram, and like she knocks over a painting behind her, because she gets too much into it. It's fucking hilarious. And then someone edited it to where she's wielding a lightsaber, and like sets the place on fire. It's fucking awesome. <laughs> Awesome. Damn but yeah, awesome. Candace what? Bailey, she just didn't have the same energy that Olivia did. Olivia had all kinds of crazy fucking energy. She was bouncing all over the set. She was kind of everywhere. Uh, one of my favorite segments was um, In Your Pants with uh, yeah. Anna oh, David. Yeah. Where her, where the two of them would talk about sex. It was kind of like Love Line, but it was just the two of them. And it was like a 10 minute segment, but they went into some hardcore shit. And it was hella funny because. Olivia Munn kept talking about fucking porn like all the time and it was fucking hilarious because she just make hella crazy jokes about just like people nut Damn dude nutting. <laughs> nutting. Well yeah but, man back in the day when the first like when Chronos turned me on to the show like I went down to to San Diego to hang out with him and stuff like that he turned me on to the show and like that's I think that's when the show was at its fucking prime because we had uh, we had Olivia Munn, we had fucking, uh, 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 what's her name? Layla Kaylee doing the fucking top so printing stuff, which She's is fucking crazy. amazing. But then we, there was also, um, uh, was it, no, I want to say his name was Will I Am, but it's not Will I Am. It's, it was something, there was a black guy on the show that used to go over, like, tech stuff. Check the bullet point, bitches! Yeah, that guy, that guy was fucking great. Like, he would go over tech stuff. But then also they had, like, the, the movie Rapid Fires with the guy doing the movie reviews. Yeah. And they also had, like, yeah, yeah. then they also had, like, yeah. a, one on anime with that was kind of fucking cool. Like, this was, this was when the show was, like, an hour long, and then eventually they cut it down to 30 minutes. But one of the hour long, man, that shit just had so much goddamn content. That was so much fun. Hell yeah, man. That shit was awesome. All right. Uh, where should we go next? Um, what is on the list? I gotta look. Well, I kind of wanted to. So, uh, Disney dropped this show called. Um, it's called. 
live in front of a studio audience. And basically what they're doing is they're recreating old school TV shows. They'll shoot like a live episode of a, like recently they did uh, Facts of Life and Different Strokes. And they'll cast other people as like the original characters. And it's actually pretty good. Like like the for a Different Stroke, they had uh, Kevin Hart playing um, Kevin Arnold. And <laughs> not Kevin Arnold. That's fucking goddamn. What's the name? <laughs> Wonder. You talking about Wonder Years? Yeah, it's Wonder Years. Uh, what's what? Gary, what's Gary, name? Coleman. Gary Coleman. He played Gary Coleman that character. But what was his character name? It was Aaron or it's shit. The what, his name. the what you talk about? Willis, what you talk about Willis? Yeah, yeah. And then um, one of the Wayne's brothers. Is it Damian Wayne played the the older brother? But then Stoop Dog was in it as well, playing like one of his friends. Like they they did a really good job of casting people, but uh. They also brought it for so the first episode has um has um facts of life and Gabrielle Union plays Tootie and she like she plays a really good Tootie like holy shit like I I was almost thought it was I thought they somehow DA'd Tootie to have her play that role but um the person who really killed it was fucking um Agatha the actress who played Agatha she's on there she plays uh Joe and she did. She fucking kills it at Joe. Like she has a whole mannerism. She has like the the tough tomboy look, even though she's like she looks very fucking fro. And she like has her hair back in a ponytail. Like the the episode was actually really it was really well done. And like they there's somebody else that comes in that plays Mrs. Garrett. But I didn't know that Facts of Life and Different Stroke they kind of tie into each other because Mrs. Garrett is in both shows. Oh, I didn't Which know. I was like, Wait, there's a, really? I didn't, there's I did not know a, that. There's a couple of crossover episodes where Arnold and his brother show up on Facts of Life and vice versa. So, oh, uh, Kim Fields is on different strokes for like a quick hot minute. Oh, yeah. But it, uh, they, I guess there's, this is going to be like an ongoing thing. So they're going to be recreating some other old school TV shows that they're going to air on uh, on Disney+. Plus. Uh, but uh, I guess Jimmy Kendall is kind of like the host of it all. But it's all... A, Allegedly filmed live in front of a studio audience, so and they don't they don't use that cheesy laugh track that they that have like people who's been dead for like fifty years. They actually have the, the audience participate in it. But I don't, overall, it was pretty good. I thought it was pretty pretty funny what they did, and the nostalgia of it all was kind of cool too. So what you so I recommend talk- people checking that out? Hold on, what you described real quick reminded me of remember Rock the TV show? Yeah. Oh yeah, back in the day they used to do that live. I think it was like the last season they did totally live. And it was like that at, at the time. I don't think it had ever been done before, where they're doing it live in front of like a studio audience. And I thought that shit was amazing. Like seeing them actually do it live was was cool as fuck. That was a great show. Yep. It was interesting. Like nobody really fucked up. I mean, there's a scene where uh, where Agatha basically trying to get Jennifer because then Jennifer Anderson's in it too. She plays uh, uh, God, what's her name? Blair. And speaking, wait, wait. Speaking of Blair, the actress who played Blair from the original. Like way back, fact of life, dude. She she can still get it. Like goddamn, she she looks like she is ageless. And I'm like, whoa, what the hell? Like she doesn't look like she's aged at all. It's fucking ridiculous. But uh, yeah, there's some scenes where where Agatha was trying to get <laughs> trying to get Jennifer Aniston to laugh, and she kind of got her to do it. But Jennifer Aniston was able to stay in character. But overall, I thought I thought it was a lot of fun to watch. I might have to check that one out. I mean, uh, if they do like something like uh, Three's Company, that shit was my. Oh, favorite dang. back in the day, goddamn! Like, that shit it worked. That shit's so funny. Um, I kind of want to take to take the wheel a little bit. I got to pull Blue in with me because I think we're the only two that have been watching this, uh, this show, which is the Flash. The Flash is back with season eight, and they just did a five episode crossover. Blue, did you get a chance to finish? Yes, I've watched them all. <laughs> so, what were your thoughts on the the crossover? I thought it was. I mean, I thought it was pretty good. Um, I like how, what they did there, and like you know, we had the we had the reverse flashpoint paradox, which was kind of cool, and like how everything kind of got fucked up from there. But I, the one the the one issue I did have is that like with uh, it was kind of weird to see what's the name in the flash suit. Like that kind of threw me off. Like he oh. seems like. <laughs> He seems like he's too old to be the Flash suit, but I mean, he has the Reverse Flash, so I mean, it kind of makes sense. But I don't know. What was your take on it? 
Um, I liked how the first couple episodes went because it was really kind of dark, kind of fucked up shit. Because like, from the audience's point of view, um, it looks like Barry might be going crazy. Yeah, and you don't know what's going on because all of a sudden, and then he wakes up from it, and like he there's destruction, and his friends are trying mm-hmm. to kill him. And they're like, he's like, dude, what are you guys doing? You're like, dude, you just tried to kill this person. That that person, look what's in your hand. He's got, like, weapons or whatever. And it's just like, you know, you need to calm down. Like, how do we know that your back is up? Super crazy. (laughs) And then when, like, it unfolds, like, reverse fast, like, totally fucked over his life. Like, and he does it over the pettiest shit. It's so mm-hmm. good. He's super petty that he destroys his whole life with it. It's it's great. He's all he's my favorite Flash villain of the TV show. I mean, he should be of the comics, but I don't. I mean, well, I feel like there's a lot more other worthy villains. The thing that was interesting with me was that, like, you know, the whole situation with Joe. Like, I was like, wait, did do we did we ever see Joe after the fucking car exploded like last season? I, like, I was kind of confused. Like, did we lose Joe? Like, I was. Cause then we, like, the actor who played Joe was gone for a little bit just because he had like back surgery or some shit, and uh, yeah, I was like, did they did he retire? Like, had he done acting? Like, did they just fucking kill him off and not like give him the proper fucking a barrel or whatever? So yeah, Joe was fucking dead. I was like, holy shit! Like, yeah. Joe is basically like Iris is Iris is the Flash's lightning rod, but Joe is fucking Barry's goddamn compass. Like. Mm-hmm. Like he's a guy who keep Barry doing like the good shit. Like he's he's the true fucking black father figure of almost not of all, all times, but like he took in a kid and he let that kid a, wh- a white kid, a white a kid. White kid. Yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah, it was weird. He does survive the explosion. There's like an episode or two after. That's when you find out the uh, the chick that was the um, Native uh, American lady has like. Meta powers that she didn't know about. Yeah, so Joe kind of helps her with that. But then, like, yeah, when we start off, we don't see Joe. And then when the moment that um, Barry mentions Joe, everyone goes off on him. Mm. Everyone, like, fucking freaks out on him. He's like, what are you talking about? He tries to call him and shit. He's like, what are you talking about? I just saw him. He's like, no, Joe's been dead for months. He's like, oh, shit, something's wrong. You did fucking eulogy? (laughs) Yeah, he's like, "Like, something's so wrong. I don't remember doing none of that shit. And to figure it out i'm like dude this is i'm actually intrigued now like what the fuck happened to joe like we didn't see what happened and then iris seems to go back and like try to investigate and then we find out the truth it was super crazy um but what's also crazy is that like you know this was a five-part episode or five-part like mini season or whatever but episode four it seems like everything was fucking done and wrapped Mm -hmm. like then the fifth episode dropped you're like wait y'all guys already figured out what's going on like what's the problem and all of a sudden just Shit, kind of just go down here one more time. One more time, one one more again. So yeah. I think they started off season eight very, very well. I I like this crossover. It, it was kind of, it gave us some different perspective of what was going on. It, it felt like real danger. I mean, someone was practically dead. Like a beloved character was dead, dead for a little bit. So they had to like fix some shit. We had Petty as uh, Reverse Flash doing some crazy shit. We get to see characters from like. All over the Arrowverse coming in help out. So uh, we got to see two different versions of the Atom. We saw uh, yeah. Cho's character and um, Ray Palmer. So it, it, it was pretty good. It was very, very fun. Um, I liked it. Hopefully they continue that same energy. You know, it's kind of crazy. It's like somebody brought up how like... So there's two guys sitting down having a conversation about the Flash. Talk about how, like, oh, the Flash is OP. Like, you know, he can do all this shit. And, like, like he can take out people, like, in a middle, in a, in a microsecond or whatever, right? But the other guy broke down, like, yeah, but, like, you know, this guy is constantly thinking at super fucking speed. Like, everything he does is just super fucking fast. For him to have a conversation with a person, like, he literally has to fucking, like, it's it's got to be painful for him to listen to somebody talk. Like, even if they're giving directions, like, that's just got to be super painful for him because... His mind is just working so fucking fast. But then, like, you know, the, the other guy had talked about how, like, the Flash can go back in time and change things to make things better. But once he comes back, like, he's the only one that remembers that previous world. So, like, you know, he's got to constantly keep keep up to date with, like, what what how things were and how things are now. And then, like, having to do with, like, people fucking dying and maybe coming back and, like, 
constantly thinking about like okay this person died and like i brought him back or something like that like it yeah. it it has to suck to be the fucking flash and we see that in that episode like it, literally in the fifth episode he comes back and everyone's just like oh uh you were out doing something and he's like oh he's like oh you guys are alive he's like what do you th-? they're like what are you talking about like Joe's been here this whole time, and you know they don't know anything about what happened yeah. after him fixing. He's the only one who saw and witnessed it. He basically has a breakdown, you know, which is good to see because he did go through a lot of shit. So, uh, you know, I was and then one one thing with this season two or with this episode two is that uh, Flash got some fucking golden boots added to his uh, his wardrobe. So I think if you I can't remember what there's the comic that that where Flash is get his golden boots basically. Uh, he needed these boots to be able to like extinguish the flames of Agaroth or something like that. But uh, yeah, they they updated his costume. It looks it looks fucking bad. I mean, that's the one cool thing about the Flash series is that the costume for the Flash is just fucking dope as hell. Like they do a really good job of the costume creations for this show. Dude, y- y'all making me excited, man. I need to get back into this series. Uh, yeah, I mean, the... the... is, is Iris still the finest thing ever? Oh, Ooh, that's I mean, that's tough because there's some pretty I mean, the daughter is pretty bad. Oh, yeah, she's pretty. She's pretty fine. Allegra is pretty cute. He, um, even even even. Oh, yeah. Uh, Cecile. Cecile's Cecile. bad as hell. Yeah. Oh, she's bad as hell. Cecile, even, uh, Cecile makes me think of a uh, homegirl from uh, from Family Matters that uh that had the thing for Urkel. Oh, yeah. That, my, that Myrtle. That's her, that, that is Myrtle. Her. That's her. No, no, that, no, no. That's not her. That girl passed away. Oh no, no, no. Away. I know, but she, she's on. Uh, she is on Family Matters though. But yeah, that. Oh yeah, that's it. She's not the same. Matter. Yeah, she she was on Family Matters and now she's on this. But she's bad too. Even uh, Arrow's daughter, she's pretty bad too. Oh. Mia Queen. She's yeah, but uh, but Iris is still that black girl magic. Like, there's no. She she holds it down. <laughs> she does hold it down, but Cecile's right there though. Because Cecile's yeah. pretty bad. Time. Hey. But yeah, uh, you can watch the first five episodes of this crossover on the CW app, so it's free. So there you go. I think the other episode, the other seasons are available on Netflix. I yeah, they are on Netflix. That's correct. I got a question for you, Blue. Um, I hear that they're bringing back Michael Keaton as Batman on oh, the man. new Batgirl movie. Wait, or show? what? Oh, Batgirl. Yeah, Wait, Batgirl. the show? No. Yeah, or Batwoman. I want Batgirl. I Batwoman. I think Batgirl. Oh, that's right. HBO Max has. Bat- they're making Batgirl. That's right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, h- how do you feel about this? You happy? You excited? You're, you're angry? Mm. With- well, I know with the with the Flash movie that they're working on, we got Michael Keaton coming back to reprise his role as Batman. So I don't know. I I have to, I have to wait and see, man. Because I mean, because this this is going to be on HBO Max, so they're going to have a little bit more money in their budget. So. And Batgirl is more of a an established character where Batwoman. Break it up too. Still kind of been around. Oh, hold on. I know it's not my internet. I'm just saying. I got the fibers. All I heard, all I heard was two. It's... Anyway, so yeah, so I mean, honestly, I'm looking forward to it because Mike uh, Michael Keaton's probably one of my favorite Batman's. Even better than Christian Christopher Chris, Christian Bell? Bell Christopher Bell Christian Bell. Yeah, I mean he did a good job, but swear to me, like that voice wasn't just doing it for me. <laughs> but uh, Kevin Kevin Conroy's the boy, best voice actor for Batman, but I think Michael Keaton did a really good job as Batman. Uh, so I mean I'm looking forward to it as long as he as long as they they do the story right, like, and I, I don't want him fucking cat bad girl. Like we gotta leave that shit out of the. <laughs> Damn. We gotta leave that shit on the cutting room floor or some shit like that, or say that shit fucking OnlyFans. <laughs> but it's, it's um, comic accurate, though. Yeah. <laughs> it would be. It, it, it would be. So, it is. Why you hate it? Is. It's, 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 it's comic accurate. It's fucking. Even uh, Batman Beyond, they talk about that. So, <laughs> yeah. My only concern is. And I love Keaton in those first two Batman movies, eighty nine, uh, Batman and Batman uh, Returns. Returns. Yeah, um, he was he was really good, especially for that that time. But dude, I was like nine years old when that shit dropped. Uh, yeah, she doesn't age right. <laughs> it, it, it's been a minute. I mean, my only thing is, will this 
70 year old Batman be older than Gordon? I mean, that's tr- that's true. It's okay. I mean, that that could that could look weird to me if he's noticeably older. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. Did they, did they say he's coming back as Batman, or is he coming back as like as Batman? I mean, he could hmm. be, uh, you know, Thomas Wayne Batman. Could. Which would make make sense, or the Batman and Batman Beyond. That would be fun. Now, I would be all over a old ass Bruce Wayne, you know, with a cane, got yeah. the the dog from but, Batman Beyond. I'd be all over that. But with my- with Batman Beyond, though, uh, Barbara Gordon is the new commissioner of Gordon, yes. and she's like, she's she's old as fuck too because she's got gray hair. So, yep. hey, because hey, hey. you got gray hair doesn't mean you're old as fuck. I'm just saying. <laughs> I guess that's I'm true, but people. I mean. Batman had great ass hair. No, <laughs> but no, I, I'm looking. I'm looking forward to this. Like, if they, if they put the budget that they have for HBO Max, I mean, this this could be pretty good. I mean, HBO has some pretty good fucking shows, but well, I guess we'll, we'll just have to wait and see. Yeah, there's. No I, wa- I'm gonna watch it. I'm gonna give it my three episode fucking limit. If it's garbage, I'm gonna start watching it, and I'm gonna trash it like I did with Teen Titans. Or not sorry, not T Titans. Titans. <laughs> you only watched three episodes of the Titans? Well, I watched three ep- I watched three episodes of Titans. They were all garbage. And then I watched the season finale and I was like, okay, they fucking Bukaki fucking back uh Star Girl or Star Star Starfire. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, no, I actually watched the first episode of season two because that's when they is that is that when they brought in Beast Boy? No. Beast Boy came in no. season, season two, right? Or was he no, season, he's one? season one? Season one. He's season one. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, nope. Speaking but of somebody it, told me I gotta watch uh, Doom Patrol because I heard that's really good. Heard that was good too. So, speaking of HBO Max, if you're watching the podcast right now, why aren't you watching The Matrix? I'm just saying. I'll just be watching The Matrix. <laughs> so why, you fucking listen to this My recorded. Man. Watch The Matrix, all right? Um, I have not watched The Matrix. If it sucks, I don't give a shit. Watch it anyway. I'm going to watch it anyway. Um, I'm looking at it on Metacritic and it definitely has mixed reviews. Um, it has more positive than mixed reviews, and on the user score, it's mostly negative. Um, to be t- keep one hundred with you, so I don't know how it's going to be, but I still enjoy what I saw in the you know the trailers. I still think it looks better than the you know the last two Matrix movies. I think this could be the Wachowski, not the Wachowski. It's like it's, it's, I think it's just Lana on this one. Yeah, it's singular. Yeah, it's one. One, of, one of the sisters. Um, doing this, so but it still looked like back to you know their old form. So I have high hopes for this movie, even if it kind of sucks. I'm still gonna fucking enjoy it. I'm gonna watch it tomorrow. So if you haven't watched it yet and you have HBO Max and you're watching this podcast, thank you very much for watching this live and and not watching that yet, but definitely watch it when you can because if you listen to this podcast, you should be a fan of the Matrix. So oh, yeah. you know. You know what? Looking at Chronos at the screen, your your video feed is a little bit on the greener side. Are you sure you're not in Matrix? I'm always uh, in Matrix. Oh damn! That's yeah, a yeah, fucking yeah. telltale sign, man. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, mine's kind of green too. What the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> oh shit! About to get sucked in. Uh, blue, green. blue. You watched it today, did you not? So I watched the first half. So my my son was in daycare. My wife was at at work, and I and work is slow right now because of the holidays. I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna Power watching fucking mates. I had to have my sound system fucking turned up because when he when the, when my little guy is here, I kind of have it turned down so you know I don't want to wake him up and stuff like that. But I, man, if I almost had to shut at eleven if I could. So it was eleven on there. Actually, the, my thing goes from zero to hundred, so I could have it up to hundred. So <laughs> it was a, it goes like negative. It was the eighties. <laughs> it goes like from zero to like negative hundred. So it's like really fucking weird for like most stereos, you know? Yeah, it's so weird. <laughs> I guess it's an audio level, but uh. Yeah, like uh, I, I, I'm I'm halfway through it, and so far I'm enjoying it. Like I'm because I, I I've actually liked the first or the last two ones too. I thought they were just, I mean they're not perfect, but they're they tie into the story, and we get to see like fucking Neo fighting Mister Smith, like a bunch of beings of Mister Smith, and this and that. Like this whole storyline just made sense to me. But yeah, so far I'm liking the new version, and they're kind. Of, I don't want to. I don't want to give any spoilers because they just dropped today. But I'm. I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. Okay. Even though okay. I've thought, I've heard people say like, "No, this is fucking 
this is bad like this is garbage i'm like no i'm actually enjoying it. i'm having a good time yeah i i finished it this morning oh, okay. so um it's it's way long so you need to set aside some time it's like damn near two hours and 40 minutes almost yeah yeah it is. so it's a long ass fucking film but they cover a lot of shit they do so i feel like this is a culturally divided movie like i feel like if you didn't grow up if you weren't a teenager watching matrix you probably won't like fully accept this latest rendition impact that the movie had back then because you grew up with watching movies that emulated it so it was like you know commonplace for wire work and crazy stunts and stuff but the movie it it, uh, it doesn't do anything like technologically new but it is definitely more story based I will say and it, it's weird because it, it acknowledges its impact on society I'll say here's, that much. here's my question. This is not spoiling shit. So is fine ass Carrie Ann Moss like is she still just bad and sexy and you know doing her thing? Like does she do a good job in it? Yeah, but she's not wearing like the outfits. So you know she's wearing like jeans and like a biker jacket. <laughs> so ain't no, ain't got no, that one? no, no. I mean there is, but like for the like. 90% of the movie, it's like jeans and she looks like a mom. I mean, like a hot mm-hmm. milk, but it's not, she's yeah. not wearing like the um, the fetish gear. Oh. If you're looking for that, you gotta, there's other, I mean, I was all about Jessica Henwick with her blue hair because I was dope. I mean, awesome. she's not wearing fetish gear either, but she's still hella bad. Honestly, though, yeah. Carrie Ann Moss today looks better than she did back then. Yeah, yeah that's what I, mean, I was excited she, about. It's it. fucking weird, but yeah, she really, I mean, because she went from like, like a supermodel body, which to me is not extremely attractive to like, you know, I mean, she's not thick, thick, but she definitely has some hips on her. You know? Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. She, has, oh, yeah. she has some booty too. And she looks like Whole more of like car. a real like person, <laughs> yeah. you know, like yeah. she's not malnourished or something like that, you know? Yeah. She I was... looks, I mean, she looks, she damn near looks good. She can still get it, but she's not wearing fetish gear. So there you go. I was, I was looking forward to a little bit of leather and some, you know, I mean, you don't get me I wrong. Mean, won't necessarily be hurt. Yeah, right. she de- she definitely looks fly as fuck in this movie. Cool. Yeah, man. she's still bad, but it's just like yeah. she dresses like, you know, she dresses like the the milfs that you see in San Francisco, like um, that are vacationing or or sightseeing or whatever. So it's nothing nothing super ultra sexy but she's you know she can still get it there is nothing she still got the she still got the black hair and blue eyes which is like yeah yeah it's still cool but i mean there's a lot of stuff that the movie covers which i like so yeah and they 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 explain a lot of fucking shit too which like how come some people aren't there and like this and that like it all fucking makes fucking sense but what's if if you if you're a fan of the series, like even if you 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 kind of also have to have like the Animatrix two to understand kind of a little bit more of the backstory. You also have to play the game. So here <laughs> played a uh, what's it called like Enter the Matrix. It's that called Enter the Matrix. Yeah. yeah. There's yeah. also Matrix Online. There's a little bit yeah. of that in there too. Yeah. So, so that, all that stuff fucking ties into this, which is kind of oh damn. Kind of it does. It does. But I mean, they still kind of spell out a lot of shit for you. So they literally yeah. laid a lot of stuff bare. Even the ending of um. Uh, was it resolutions or whatever or revolutions that mm-hmm. even that is played up in this one very early in the film too it's pretty it's kind of funny but there's a lot of stuff explained I'll, I'll wait for the rest of y'all to watch it I enjoyed the film uh, it's because I was there you know I was there watching it in the theater I think if you grew up watching it in the 2000s and whatnot you're probably just not it's not gonna hit the same way. Yeah. Right. I'm gonna I'm pop it this uh, either tonight or tomorrow. You know. Yeah. I, mean, I forgot. What that, I was gonna say one cool thing, but I fucking forgot what it was. But then, um, then it wasn't that cool. Okay. Well, it wasn't that. It wasn't that fucking <laughs> cool. Damn. But no. So one of my favorite things about the whole entire fucking Matrix franchise is that uh, Neil's character is, is uh, Thomas Anderson, and like, but Mr. Smith always called him Mr. Anderson. And I love that fucking... I would get that all together in time. <laughs> like, <laughs> Mr. Anderson. Uh, I will... You won't say shit. 
No, I can say there's an analogy. I mean, no, you. Yeah, with me, you spilled my yak. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's my analogy. Hold on, John. You really, prodigy, you really it. need to invest in a better internet connection, man. Oh yeah, I got it set up. But I already have my thing set up. I just haven't hooked it up. Really? Do you yeah, know? it's not hooked up. Mm, okay. I do. Okay. It's right there. It's right there. <laughs> the, the, the new internet just hooked, not hooked up in the back. No, it's not hooked up. Okay, nerds, listen to this podcast right now. Who the fuck gets a new internet that's faster than the shit that you had, and you don't hook it up immediately? No, no, no. It's a Wi-Fi extender, so I had oh, it hooked up for a little okay. bit. Okay. Let, let me let me ask y'all this: Who's watched? Uh, I know it just dropped too, but Witcher Two, Season Two. Any any episodes oh, watched? Oh yes, I'm on episode four, maybe five. I think. Oh shit! Ooh, okay. Just saying. Damn. I'm, no spoilers, uh, but tell, tell me what you think so far. Man. Uh, I'm I'm liking it so far. I started watching, you know, the last season. I watched the first um, couple episodes just to get, kind of get a refresher, and then we didn't make it all the way through, so we had to not watch a recap episode of The Witcher um, just to remember <laughs> some shit. But yeah, it, it's really cool to like have another another cool song that's slightly a banger on this. And uh, oh, wait, it's not it's I'm not quite as good as Toss the Coin to Your Witcher, but uh, but it's up there. It's up there, and, you know, and it, it's cool to see you know Siri, sort of like becoming like a doing her training to become a Witcher. So in The Witcher Three, so if you play The Witcher Three, it's getting more into the territory that you're probably more familiar with, because mm-hmm. I mean Siri being at Comoran, um is in The Witcher Three and stuff like that. So you're familiar with some of these more characters. Some of these characters having a Vesemir looking like Vesemir, as I would imagine him anyway. In the show is uh, is really cool. Um, there's a lot in the show so far. It's it's just as good as the last season, as far as I'm concerned. So far, it's uh, it's really enjoyable, and it doesn't seem like there's gonna be like a, a weird time thing that they had in the last one. Hopefully, oh yeah, shit took me off. Yeah, yeah. It, it is my girl. Uh, I know Jennifer's got to be in it heavy, but what about Tris Marigold? Because she wasn't in season one very much. She is in it, but she doesn't look like Tris that I remember. She's like this. I think the memes. <laughs> attractive woman, but it's not. I got I got to look at the pictures, but I'm pretty sure. Look up Tris Marigold um, from The Witcher. Some of the memes I saw said uh, like. The first thing that Witcher trained her with was uh, darkening her eyebrows. Cause... <laughs> oh, for, for for Siri, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So Trissa in the in the movie or in the show looks nothing like the game. Oh yeah, yeah, we so knew that. It's okay because she's she's still very attractive. So, but is she in season two more though? Because season one she was yes. barely in. She's definitely in this season, and she definitely tie- has a time with Siri. And you know Cal Morin, and you know you already know her shit, what she does with Siri. She's the that that she was the daughter, right? She was like the daughter of the the tribe that got fucking like, like raided, raided, right? Siri, yes. Okay. But not Triss is like a like a sorceress sort of. Mm-hmm. But what do they call him in The Witcher? I forget what the, the names are there. Do they even have a name? They're like they're basically fucking they're... witches. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's... I know. Homegirl Home went from having a goddamn hunchback, hunchback to being fucking fine as hell, so. That glow. Sorcery, that glow, magic, that fucking makeup, makeup, I don't give a fuck. Her yeah, eyes. that glow for Jennifer was world class. She was Quasimodo for like three episodes, <laughs> and then she was the baddest woman on the screen. I was like, God oh, damn. I think who is this and just, beauty? just throw it around, too. It was her yeah. eyes. Like, the way. I don't know how they did her. So. You can obviously tell. Yeah, so first of all, too. this is one of my big gripes about The Witcher, okay? It's it's big, but it's a small gripe, to be honest. The way they did the eyes of Geralt of Rivia, it's not like The Witcher. Mm-hmm. It's just not. Yes, his eyes are yellow, but it doesn't have fucking cat eyes. And yeah. 100% you can tell that he's wearing contacts, okay? Yeah. But when it comes to... Um, Yennefer. Yennefer... The way that they do her eyes, I don't know if it's CGI or what, but god damn. Yeah. Like, her eyes, like, her violet eyes look fantastic. I don't know what kind of contacts they're using with her or if it's CGI, but please do that with Geralt and make him fucking have cat eyes and make it look realistic because you can tell that he's wearing contacts and yeah. they're not cat eyes, so. Nah. That's, That's kind of like how it was for fucking, uh, 
for Aquaman. Aquaman. Uh, not like, like Aquaman, Aquaman and the not just the, the, not the Snyder cut, cut, but the original version of Justice League. League. Like, like, like you, you could, could tell, tell he was wearing fucking contacts, but then like Snyder cut it. It looks fucking deep. Yeah, yeah, that 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 shit worked. But yeah, I'm I'm down for. I'm. Is it like nine ten episodes? I think right. I, don't, I Eight, think nine? so. I don't know. Um, I okay. didn't really. I don't. I didn't look at the the how many episodes there were. But I'm just. I'm just enjoying what what I'm seeing. And they're doing a whole other Witcher show um, oh, called like Blood Something, and it's with uh, Michelle Yeoh, Yeoh, baby. Yes, yes, with Michelle Holy Yeoh. Shit. Oh, Blood so Origin. Like, yeah, and it's all like it, it's mostly elves. It looks like this the main the main group. So I think it's oh. going to show like what how the elves went away, um, in you know the Witcher like universe. So it looks really good. So but it's it's only a trailer, but I think it's cool they're giving us more Witcher like, content. Hell yeah! Well, season, season two is only eight, eight episodes. episodes. Mm-hmm. No, that that's still that's still more than season one. I think season one was like six, right? No, season one was eight as well. Oh, I'm tripping. Okay, still. I'm just glad to get back. Sorry, it feels like it's been too long. The Witcher Blood Origin is what it's called. It's going to be on Netflix. It's live action with Michelle Yeoh, and it's 1,200 years before Geralt of Rivia. I love it. I'm I'm fucking down, man. man. Do you ever watch the the animated one, The Witcher, The Nightmare of the Wolf? Yes. Yes. Watch that one. It was good. I just finished it last night, too, before I watched Matrix. I know that Witcher Witcher got picked up up for a season season three, which is great. Hell yeah. Sure. Dang. But uh, Cowboy, Cowboy Bebop, Bebop did not get picked up for season two. <laughs> uh, Wait, did anybody? Did anybody watch, watch Cowboy Bebop, Bebop other than I myself? Have, like I all the first one. I, I'm gonna finish it, but I only watched the first one. So like I, I thought it was. I mean, it's it was okay. It wasn't great, but like I would, I would really expect a season two. But yeah, I guess it is what it is. I had fun. It, I had fun. It wasn't the worst anime. Adaptation of a show that I've seen, different, but uh, it was it was fun. It was fun. They they took some of the elements, had fun with it, did a relative relative decent job. But yeah, it is what it, it is. But you know, kind of sucks to get into these two. You you know I'm a big One Piece guy. They're doing a live action one. What is that? What is is that a show? Uh-huh. Yeah, what's uh, wait, 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 wait. Is that, is that an order? Is that an order from KFC? Can I get that yeah, one piece? One piece. Just one is, hey, is one piece like a type of pie? Like slice. Um, they're doing a live action one. Shout out to the actors. The actors seem like decent people, decent young folks. But even without a trailer, I know it's gonna be rough. It's gonna be <laughs> so rough. Yeah. <laughs> you know, some things just don't translate that well. America has not made a successful anime adaptation of an anime. I mean, cause live action, like the the Bleach one was actually pretty good, but I think it was only one episode of that. Yeah, that, that was Japanese one... though. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like Jap- Japan, they can do this. Shit. Like uh, there's an anime called Eraser. I watched the live action one first. And I thought that was good. Then I saw the anime. But then I also I did the same thing for the live action version of Death Note for Jap- the Japanese version. Well, I mean, I thought that was pretty really good. This is a weird thing. So when you talk about, especially Cowboy Bebop, it's almost like an inception of a show. So you're you're having a show that is basically a love letter to Western culture <laughs> from Japan. Then you're going to remake that show from a Western aspect as a love letter to Western culture. Like it doesn't really, you know, there's like there's problems there, you know, yeah. already from the get go. But you know, the first episode I, I still liked. Um, but yeah, it's just it, it's weird that I don't think that the vast majority of directors and even actors are really going to understand like the the motivations of Japanese culture emulating American culture. It's, like I, I think with other shows, you might not have a better time doing it. Um, but in Cowboy kind of Bebop and like other shows, even like Samurai Champloo would be kind of weird because you know they have like this whole you know Edo era samurais doing badass shit but it's also heavily infused with like hip-hop culture yep and it, it'd be really weird to, for that to come across to an american audience and not seem sort of racist even though it it's not you know as if you watch the anime it's like it's not racist at all it's just like showing their love for hip-hop to me to me the thing that's really tough with anime though is 
in terms of an adaptation, you have these points where it's like incredibly silly, like just yeah. slapstick, funny, drop down, like like crazy silly, and then it can go to incredibly serious or incredibly dramatic or whatever. But you know those beats from an animation standpoint, and they don't always translate. Like even the facial expressions or why that nose is bleeding, or you know what I mean. Like some things don't just work as well in live live action. Like if you see a live action person and their nose is bleeding, you don't automatically think, "Oh, that person must be super turned on by that hot ass sexy woman." You know what I mean? Like you just don't. <laughs> You're like, uh, I get that nigga that tissue. Yeah, it's like you just. <laughs> It doesn't, not everything translates as well, but, you know, you know, we, we, as an anime fan, you'll still kind of watch and give it a chance, but, you know, we've been, we've been burned a lot. We just have. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Scorch. Yeah, man. So, anyway. Well, even like with video games, like video game movies, the same fucking avenue, like, I mean, it's, there's been a few that's been pretty good. Like, for example, we talked about Sonic earlier. That was a pretty good video game adaptation and, and, of things, but like, and The Witcher, even though it was a book, but, you know, whatever. Yeah, yeah but they're like, yeah. Yeah. the, the Mortal Kombat. Yeah. I mean, the is there the one HBO was, back? Yeah, the new one but was, I, like, it was so bad to me. I liked it. The, the, new, it. the new movie wasn't, it, I mean, it was, it was fun, you know what I mean? It wasn't, it wasn't the worst thing I've ever seen. I, but I tell you what, though, do you see the Scorpion's Revenge that came out the same year? The anime, the anime, the anime, right? The animated one was actually better. Oh yeah. So you know, but uh, but shout out to Detective Pikachu. When you talk about you know video game ones, that one fucking worked. It did. It really did. Angry Birds, Angry Birds made probably the most oh, money as a video game movie. That shit was great. And you know they're gonna do Fortnite the movie. You can already count on it. Oh god. Like, oh. I, uh, I don't. It's all bad. Oh, I think Fortnite would probably be like one of those. What was it? Uh, I kind of be. I, it it kind of would be kind of like Wreck-It Ralph, where they like pay all these like different avenues to be able to bring their their uh, IPs into this universe. Because Fortnite, like, but they got Spider Man in there right now, and they got fucking DC characters. Like, like Fortnite has so many different fucking avenues that are pulled into that goddamn series that they wouldn't have to pay. A buttload of money for fucking copyright. Like I'm pretty sure they have to pay fucking Ariana Grande and uh. Oh, what's that guy's fucking name who did the show? Travis Scott, there? who got kicked Travis out. Scott. Yeah, they have to pay them all fucking money to have this. I mean, like this, you know, like, that Fortnite movie. has a like a campaign story mode. Yeah, they do. So <laughs> never, never, never forget that's a how... fucking Far Cry movie. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah that's a, well. I'm sorry. So the Far Cry movie is directed by Doctor Uwe Boll. Oh, so oh, shit. yeah, all right, that's all you gotta say. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm stopping right there. Why you gotta put Doctor in front of his name? I'm just saying. I like, I like to see Doctor Dre. I was like, like, oh shit, because he has a doctorate. I don't give a yeah. shit. What, it was, it wasn't in directing, now was it? Yeah. <laughs> um, did y'all hear that uh, Henry Cavill? Like he, he's been talking all kind of shit on this internet. What? He's been saying that. Uh, He's very much interested in trying to be uh, uh, John Marston if they do a Red Dead movie, or Commander fucking Shepard if they do a, a Mass Effect movie or tra- or, mo- or a TV they're, series. They're doing a Mass Effect series, but they haven't picked a Shepard. And then he wants to do Warhammer. I was like, man, this guy, he's got some nerd credentials, obviously, and oh, yeah. uh, he certainly wants to play some leads. And I'm like, you know what, especially based on you know, Superman and and Geralt, I'm down. Like, let him fucking do it all. I mean, and, and he's an actual nerd, so yeah, yeah, like I mean, he can build his own computer. Yeah, he did like a YouTube video, right, where he talked about building his own fucking computer. Yeah, and, and, he, and he paints he his, his own. Computer. And he paints his own like Warcraft. Oh, I'm sorry, not Warcraft. Sorry, Warhammer Forty Thousand figurines. Mm-hmm. That's like very meticulous because they're fucking small. Shit, I used to do that when I was a kid too. Um. Obviously, he's an adult, so am I. I do that shit no more. But also, he has more free time than me. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. I, I'm, yeah, I'm down. I can see it. It's funny. My uh, my sister in law. She started watching Witcher just because having kept Henry Cavill. Having him. I was, I was gonna say fucking uh, Kevin Conroy, but <laughs> yeah, Kevin Conroy's in it. But um, 
Yeah, yeah she, she started, started watching it just because he did it. And she, I mean, she's got to I got to give her a little beat credit because she actually plays uh, D&D. Like, her and her friends play D&D Weekly. I'm like, you know what? I'm a 40-plus-year-old man, and I've never played fucking D&D in my whole goddamn entire life. <laughs> like, how, 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 I even asked her, how can I fucking join? Cause I, I want to play. Like, I want to play because, you know, we got Stranger Things. They talk about it. We talk about it here on the podcast, and we got the fucking... Dungeon dice, like everybody keeps talking about it, but when I was growing up as a kid, that shit wasn't in my world. We should like, do it with uh, shit, uh, pre recorded lives. That's the last time I played uh, DD, is actually um, over at uh, pre recorded lives. Please, we played like a short, very short session of DD, but yeah, they're they're all about it. I used to play DD when I was when I was like a little little kid, too. So that, that, shit, was controver- that shit was controversial back in the day. Well, oh, yeah, back yeah, in the 80s, it was. Witchcraft. Yeah, because yeah, they were trying to say you're summoning the devil or some shit like that, and you had silly people like Tipper Gore and the Throat Goat talking about how, you know... <laughs> Damn! You know, you know what's crazy is that, like, you know, back in the days, like, people used to, like... I'm talking about, like, way back in the fucking days, where, like, you take a picture of somebody and think you're capturing their soul, and here we were, like, maybe... I guess this was, like, more like 40 years ago, like, playing, like, a... Actually, not even that was even at the Harry Potter books. Like, motherfuckers were talking about how, like, you know, oh, that's a devil's book and this is blah, blah, blah. Like, we still got those people out there that aren't, I guess, even nowadays with, like, even like with the COVID vaccine, like, they're talking about people putting chips in you and this and that. Like, there's always, there's always going to be that fucking, um, the controversy shit out there. Like, the motherfuckers that's not looking at the, the big picture. The, the thing that got me was, Okay, D and D had all this controversy around it, and you know, summoning this and magic evil, blah blah blah. But you had like the Ouija board didn't get that much heat. You know what I mean? Like it seemed like D and D got more heat than the Ouija board. No, it's not the Ouija board <laughs> didn't get enough heat. It's the you know, priests raping little boys didn't, or you know, children didn't get yeah, enough heat. That's yeah. the thing. Yeah. That, you know, these religious organizations want to talk shit about, you know summoning the devil meanwhile they're raping raping little boys and little girls in the back of fucking pews and shit like that so mm-hmm. yeah it's you know it's a it's, it's the shell game of like, don't look over here look over there so yep yeah. dig up schedule Go, going on going on grinder and finding 15 year olds yep mm. man if y'all find that uh disturbing then uh take up the church not with me so yeah, yeah. <laughs> those are facts <laughs> yeah, those are 100 percent facts and the fact that they decided to move around all those fucking disgusting ass priests are raping kids and shit like that to mm-hmm. hide them. Those are all facts. Yeah, but also I'll say this too. I mean, remember, law enforcement and the FBI didn't do a really hardcore job either. Like, you know what I mean? Like, these are, you know, you know who these people are and they moved from Boston to New Mexico. Like, you got jurisdiction. You could bust that ass, but... You know, a lot of times they look the other fucking way too. No, no. Well, they looked a certain way. They were like, "Oh, well, there was a you know black kid smoking weed." So yeah. throw them in. Jail. Yeah, not somebody that yeah. raped a kid. So yeah, yeah. And, and then, then we wonder why. Start... And then we wonder why there's you know a serious issue with pedophilia in America, with at the highest levels because they were looking at the wrong things. Maybe pay less attention to people doing, you know, petty drug crimes and pay more attention to people that were destroying children's lives. Yeah. And, That's why and I, don't I kinda, write, don't write books about uh, don't write books where you're going off against black men as well innocent ones. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what I, I kind of wish there was a real a real Punisher out there, like somebody. Ah, there you in, go. And the winds, like okay, speaking you did this. Of, well, speaking of the Punisher, they recently had to uh, change his uh, his logo. Recently, I don't know if y'all saw it, but they changed his logo, and people are like up in arms about it. I'm like. Okay, so if you're up in arms about it, then go directly to the police. They're the ones that caused them to change the logo because the mm-hmm. a lot of these police departments were having these bad police officers using this Punisher logo uh, for nefarious means of like just punishing people. L- listen, if you're a police officer listening to this podcast, you are not a Punisher. You are a police officer. You uphold the law. You protect and serve. You don't punish people. Punishment is passed down by judges and juries and shit like that. You are not judge, jury, and executioner. You can take somebody to jail. And if somebody's, you know, directly harming somebody, yeah, you have certain, you know, rights that you can, you know, injure somebody or possibly take a life. But your job out there is not to just punish people. 
It's to make sure they abide by the law. If they don't, you take them to jail so they can be, um, so they can have a jury of their peers convict them or not convict them of a crime. So it's easy as that. The fictional character of Frank Castle also hunted and killed certain cops in the fictional Marvel world. Yes, he so, did. Like, let, let's just be clear. It was always a really, really dumb and non-comic based, you know, and non-logical kind of uh, abuse of that symbol and whatnot. And I will say this. He was a cool, popular fucking character. You know what I mean? He's still a an awesome fucking character in terms of a really dark anti-hero and whatnot. But, you know, when real life starts to bleed in and you got some heinous shit going on, yeah, I could see a, a billion dollar company like, you know, Marvel with under Disney wanting to go a different direction. I get it. Well, I don't... But, the, but the, also with, what's also with the Punisher is that uh, he was a flawed character too because there was a lot of people out there that like would use like what he would do to try to take out people who were kind of on the innocent side, like uh, in the Spider-Man uh, franchise, like he tried to kill Spider-Man because of some shit. They, they thought he, uh, they thought he killed Peter Parker. I guess what the storyline was that Spider-Man killed Peter Parker. And so the Punisher was out there trying to kill Spider-Man. It's like, dude, I am, I am Peter Parker. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's also hilarious is that Frank Castle was never a police officer. Actually, no, wait, hold on. Uh, he wasn't an no, FBI he, agent or something I like think that. He, he, hold on, maybe he was. No, he was a police officer, but he was a he was a marine, and then his family got killed, and then he decided to become a vigilante. That's the thing. Yeah. He's a vigilante, yeah. so he he definitely was not doing any of his duties as the Punisher and also being a police officer. So yeah, that people just will pick up that shit and just run with it and be like, yeah, I just punish people. Like if if you want to punish people, you know, turn in your badge because that's not what your job is. Yep. Yeah. Uh, what, what does the new symbol look like? I haven't even seen it. Can it's you put it on? It's kind of weird looking. Let me upload it. It kind of looks like a bull, kind of. It. Yeah. It, 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 it's a skull, but it had, there's horns on it. It made me think of... Uh, the first thing that popped in my head was uh, Bleach. Like uh, Ichigo's character. Like his... Uh, his uh, God, what's the name of the... The Death Sights. Well, not Death Sights. Form. Uh, God, I can't think what the form is called. Yeah, I'll, okay. I'll, I'll pull it up for you right now, hold on, so everybody can see what it looks like. Let me see if I can share a tab. How do I do this? So that's a, a new on, Devil go. Skull logo. I don't know. That's what it looks like. Oh, okay, I do see it. Um... So it, it looks like the, it almost looks like the the Punisher with like the from the car. What's the guy's name? I forget the kid's name. Oh, uh, oh um... Oh, Rodriguez, no. Oh, God, I'm seeing. Is it Miguel? No. I think it's Miguel, too, but yeah. Oh, because he was on fucking uh, Age of the Shield. Javi Reyes? Oh, Robbie Reyes. Robbie Reyes, Robbie Reyes. Yeah. yeah. It looks like him as the Punisher with, like, horns and shit, but yeah. Them, ho them horns almost look like uh, Wolverine's old school costume. Yeah. Yeah, they kind of do. Yeah. Well, it kind of gave me the Ichigo vibe from fucking Bleach. Like, yeah. when he's in his, uh, what's the name stage? Comes at, what's the name of that stage, Kronos? Uh, Bankai. Oh, no, no, it's Bankai. When, when he has a skull. When he's, uh... Oh, uh, not a hollow, but... He's, he's hollow -fied. Yeah, hollow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah when he's hollow that's what it is. Dude, I, I saw that they bring him back, back Bleach in a fucking major way. Y'all saw that trailer? Yes. Yes, and I'm looking yes. forward to it next year because I mean Bleach was great until the last arc, and it was like, oh, yeah. it was like, right. <laughs> Bleach, Bleach left a sour part of my heart when they fucking <laughs> they basically came back and showed two like they 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 had a amazing fight scene with Ichigo and the one of the uh, oh god the guy who could turn to a fucking love. Anyway, he finally went against one of the fucking bad guys, and they had a fucking filler episode like they were like, oh hey, you know Ichigo find this person. But we're gonna talk about this goddamn soccer match. <laughs> it's like, what yeah, the fuck? that was a uh, soccer. What the fuck? Grimjaw is it Jagger Jack or yeah, something? Grimjaw. Yeah, Grimjaw. Yeah, yeah. It's Grimjaw but, something. But what's, what's so bad, bad about it that okay, that that arc, that little mini series ended, and they came back and had like two episodes where they showed fighting again, and they did another fucking filler episode. I'm like, you know what? I'm done. Like, I, I can't, I can't keep up with you guys. And like, I tried to go back to, this, I tried to go back and watch where I was. I'm like, shit. 
What, what, what episode, episode number was, was that? that? I was like, like one seventy-eight. One. one. I, so I have to like keep watch, watch episode, episode and like, like okay, okay, I see this episode. episode. Keep, keep jumping forward and forward and forward. But it's been like, man, a good fucking three years. Damn. You know what show that did that shit to me was Witchblade. Witchblade did that shit. Is it is it better? Like I know why they do the filler episodes and everything, but is it better to just be like, hey, we're gonna take a little break and let the manga fucking you know get. I wish they would do that. I think it's better. So there's there's a couple things. Yes, I I do as an American think it's better to do the breaks and have like seasons, uh, because obviously like the some of the more popular animes out there, for, at least in America are ones that do it in seasons. But also, we're pre- pre-programmed to to do the season thing, right? To, like, yeah. watch a series and then take breaks and then keep watching it. In Japan, I, I can't speak on that because, obviously, if it, wasn't a, it, if it was not popular there, they wouldn't do it. And I think that for, like, a, at least a portion of the audience, it's fun to have these silly nonsense episodes. And we still get that sometimes, yeah. even in America, with, with some of our favorite, you know, sitcoms and... And other season season shows is that we you have episodes that have nothing to do with progressing this, the plot at all, and we have fun with it. But I think that we might be a little bit too critical with uh, having filler episodes. And but the, I think the problem is with anime is that sometimes they're way too fucking long. Like there there's been literally whole seasons of Naruto of just filler, and it's like you, you can't you can't do that. Like yeah. at least at least and have an American audience like doesn't work like, i definitely know like here like, like sorry kind of jump back, back, back to the flash, flash. Like, like there's a there's an episode where like there was a the singing episode the fucking like, the musical version where we had like supergirl singing and a flash singing like we had joe fucking singing like everybody's fucking singing even what was so great everybody was a great fucking singer like uh like joe west is a he's an amazing fucking jazz singer Barry Allen, he's an amazing fucking singer. He he was on Glee. Fucking Supergirl's from Glee. She was an amazing fucking singer. But then fucking Cisco Ramon, fucking Quake or not Quake. Uh, what's the name of the show? Oh, Cisco. But uh, yeah, he's an amazing fucking singer. Uh, but yeah, vibe. But like, yeah, that that episode was a giant fucking filler episode. But it was just one episode. But with anime, it's like you get like fifteen, not fifteen. You get about fifteen episodes, and it's just fucking filler. Like. Dragon Ball Z is a, a perfect example of that. Fucking um, uh, Samurai X, another example. Inuyasha. Uh, God, there's so many. There's so many shows out there that have so many filler episodes. But it kind of. I mean, I understand. I understand why they have it because you know, want to keep the audience engaged. Because if you're not being talked about, you're kind of not in people's mind. But it. it I don't know. I just I feel like it, it. It really just stick with the manga. Oh, here we go. I'm looking. I'm looking up just to give you a, a sense of like the Naruto filler episodes. I looked it up, and the ones that are pure filler episodes, it's episodes. And this is like this is just the longest stretch of them. Okay, episodes 143 through 219 are <laughs> all filler episodes. Yep. Whole. I remember watching it. I was like, dude, like what the fuck? I think it was in Iraq when I was watching these things. I was like. What is going on here? Like, why is this all just bullshit? Mm-hmm. It was almost 100 episodes. A fucking yep. filler. My thing is, don't get me wrong. I love when you're like, uh, when you do your, your beach episodes. Like, you go to the beach, and obviously there's all kinds of bikinis and shit. I love that. that that's fine, and fan service and whatnot. But when you have the fillers that are literally just flashback kind of snippets of things that you, big events that you know have already happened and shit. I'm like, dude, this isn't even new footage. This gives me nothing. Doesn't give me side story or shit. Like, you just recycled some old shit from two years ago. Like, what the fuck, man? But yeah, anyway. Filler is on filler. Uh, but I'm, I'm, down for, I'm down for... I need to catch up on Bleach. Yeah, yeah hold on. I, this is this was more, even more disgusting. I remember this completely now. So when Naruto... This is what happened with Naruto. So on episode... Two, oh, sorry, 143. It went from like that's when I started the filler. This is in 20, 2005. The filler lasted until 2007, and the last episode Damn. was 220, and that was the last episode of Naruto. Yep. And that's when it went to Shippuden. And it was just mm. like, dude, what the fuck? Like, you, you did three years, I'm sorry, two years solid of filler. And then you went straight to a whole other like 
you know, anime. Wait, wait is this, this... So this is... Wait, so, so the, the last, last part of, Ch of Naruto, Naruto was with him. him. Oh, no, that was Shippuden. You're thinking of Shippuden, Shit, yeah. never mind. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Shippuden had the fucking... Oh, oh shit, wow. Holy sh Wow. Like, like, I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm like, like thinking about it. I'm like, oh, yeah. Like, a lot of the shit at the end of that doesn't make fuck. Like, once... What did what did Naruto told me to his parents? What when did Jiraiya die? Was that Shippuden? That's Shippuden. No, no, Shippuden, yeah. Okay, yeah, okay, never mind. Wow. Shippuden was better than Naruto. I mean, by far. Yeah, it was. God it damn. Was. I mean, don't get me wrong. There was a lot of good shit in Naruto as well, but yeah. Shippuden really pushed the, the the narrative of the of the whole show. It's, it's really funny on uh, on, on TikTok. TikTok they, there's this, there's, there's videos out there, out there where people were watching anime, be like, oh. It's, this character, this uh, dry guy, I really like him. He's he's funny. Like he he likes the bitches and stuff like that. And like his friends looking at him, like, oh, are you just watching this now? And like he's like, yeah, he's fighting against his pain guy. And it's like, what? No, man. Like the the, the, the friends are fucking crying. Like it sucks because I'm watching it too. And I'm like, oh man, yeah, it's it, it's gonna get all back. It's like, wait, Jiraiya's gonna come back, right? Like why is he why is he sinking in the water? Like there's literally there's episodes in Shippuden. That, that, like, even thinking about it would trigger, like, a little thug tear in my eye. Yeah. Like, it, it's... Dude, Jiraiya dying okay. fucking hurt my soul. And I was watching Shippuden way late. Like, I was watching it, like, two, three years ago. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. And then after Jiraiya died, man, to be honest with you, I haven't even finished Shippuden. Was, oh, shit. Fuck, man. It gets way better. <laughs> it hurts. It's honestly... Shippuden has, like, one of the best endings of any anime ever and like what happens in like the, the oh, yeah. finale is so fucking good dude plus there's a there's a scene where that would top oh for me at least for like after jiraiya died like holy shit there's some other shit that happened to naruto i'm like holy like i it had like i was literally bawling tears like dry path away with that but like some other shit that happens is like fuck man like damn like it's 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 crazy it's you you gotta, you gotta go, go back, back and watch it. Yeah, Prodigy, if, if, you you, have, yeah, if, you, if you stop watching, like, when Jiraiya died, you're missing a lot, man. A lot. I think there was still some stuff afterwards, but... There's it was, a lot like, afterwards. It was, maybe, it was maybe, I don't know, 50 to 70 episodes after that. But I, I didn't uh, get it at all. Did you see when, when Naruto meets his mom and dad? Yes. I like why he why they gave him the nine tail. Yes, definitely for dad. Okay. You remember dad? Dash. I remember mom. Okay, yeah, the mom's the man. The mom is so happy, fucking in tears. Like holy shit. Yeah. But, the fourth grade hey. ninja war was awesome too. Like when Madara came back and just like wrecked everybody, like they were nothing. Yeah. Like, <laughs> he's like, what the fuck? Like, why is this guy so badass? Like he's like, he's, dude had a cheat code the whole time. He, he he would listen he listened to uh he would listen to LL Cool J like he was sitting back in the cut with a crush that's a trip. <laughs> <laughs> Did y'all see this shit? Uh, it started blowing up on Twitter uh, where Jay Z was talking about Beyonce and then people kept going back and forth with Beyonce versus uh, Michael Jackson and who was the better who is the better performer of all time. And who would win in a versus battle is the uh, kind of the the twenty twenty one version between I'm sorry Beyonce and Michael Jackson. Yeah, this is what the kids were arguing about today. Well, that's why versus? they're children. They're they're, they're dumb. Yeah. yeah, fuck them kids. Yeah, I mean don't get me wrong. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a Beyonce fan, especially because you know my for a while you know our youngest she was totally in Beyonce, but now she's in baby metal. Thank you. <laughs> she loves baby metal now. Every single time we're in the car, baby metal dad. Anyway, she's gonna be Beyonce for a really long time, and Beyonce's a good artist. But um, <coughs> I mean, Michael Jackson, even with his even with his issues, I mean, he was he he did more he did way more for music than Beyonce did, and I yeah. don't think that's even controversial to say, like not even a little bit. I mean, he's like, been in entertainment since he was a child. So I mean, technically, so is Beyonce, but not that little. But yeah. But like, also with like, I mean, think of like any kind of outstanding Beyonce performance that she's done that's like legendary. Like, only thing I think about is like what she did on Netflix and then like the Super Bowl. But like, MJ fucking did the Super Bowl and it was like, motherfuckers was just. 
every time Michael, Michael Jackson, Jackson did a fucking performance, performance live, like, like there was always video footage of motherfuckers passing out. Like, yeah, I mean, it can when, be women, man, like everybody's fucking fading. <laughs> bro, when Michael Jackson hit the stage, he would stare out into the crowd and everyone would like cry and go crazy. He'd look left, then the left side of the crowd would pass out. Then he'd look right. The right side of the crowd, crowd would pass yeah. out. The people in the middle would just still be there. And he, he wouldn't, wouldn't say shit. shit. He'd just stand nope. there. He'd just stand there. Beyonce and then do like, that shit. Like, like Beyonce, Beyonce brought up, she, she had, had like the Lemonade album, album. But, but like Michael Jackson had a fucking Moonwalker, Moonwalker which, which is like, the motherfucker turned to a goddamn, goddamn car <laughs> and, <fucking laughs> and, I was, and then at the end he turned and got that spaceship and flew off and went back to where he went, where he came from. Like, I don't think Beyonce was just smashing cars. Like, I, I, made the insurance rates. I think th- I think this is one of those things where there's a generational fucking divide. You know, because if you're if you're 22, 25 right now, you didn't know fucking Michael Jackson. You know what I mean? Like, you just weren't around for that fucking era at all. And I was like a kid. We were kids uh, for a lot of Michael's years. But I mean, he was bigger than fucking life. You know what I mean? Now and and to me it's not it's not a shade thing against Beyonce, you know you can't get much bigger than her for this era, but god damn like MJ was it you oh, know what I mean? Hold on before because I know this argument's gonna come up because I was just thinking about it. People are gonna say, well, oh Beyonce sold so many more albums. Okay, listen, let me just break it down for you for basic math. In 1990. There was like a little over 5 billion people on the planet. There are more than 2.5 billion more people today than there were in 1990, which is probably the arguably the height of like Michael Jackson's um, you know, musical career. I mean, yeah, he, he made songs in the 90s too, but it, you know, even at the end of the 90s and like, you know, 2000 was still, you know, 6 billion people. There's, you know, there's over 7 billion people right now. It's, it's almost 8 billion people right now on the planet. God and damn. yeah, with that comes extra album sales. So yeah, al- album sales are always going to be tough. You got the streaming stuff now that you know kind of warps things. I get it, but just I'm going to tell you like this: everybody, I, I will confess, pretty much everybody in their mamas knows who Beyonce is in this era, obviously. Yeah, and it, it definitely '80s and '90s. Everybody knew who fucking Michael Jackson. Of course, was and could sing along with all those songs and whatnot. Huge icons, both of them. But I, I'm with y'all. I, you know, I gotta give the nod to MJ from a just, even just an overall performance standpoint. And I've been to a Beyonce concert fairly recently. I saw her in uh, Levi Stadium like two, three years ago. But fucking Michael Jackson used to just rock out fucking huge Super Bowl football arenas and everybody would be jamming out. You know? Like, yeah, I mean, he would announce that he was going to go... Like, the year that he passed, every single venue that he was going to visit was pretty much sold out, if not yeah. sold out. Yeah. That This Is It tour? Yeah. Sold out. Like, all of his European stuff was definitely sold out. I think in the U.S., it was definitely not sold out, but it definitely wasn't, like, empty, for sure. Yeah. So, right. so, sorry, I'm, 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 I hate the fucking brands up right now, but like, you know what? Fuck R. Kelly, man. Because like, I, I, so the, the reason I break it up is because there's never a wrong time to say that. I'm just saying. Well, no, okay. the, the, the fucking problem is, is that like, you know, I'll be doing something and I'll just start singing one of his fucking songs. I'm like, I can't, I like, it's, uh, it's like, oh, oh God, what is it? Um, you got Pied like, Piper. Oh, yeah, I got Pied Piper. Piper. Like, literally. Like I'll, 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 I'll like, ignition. Did ignition get you? Ignition. That's or what it was. Ignition. Or is no, that or no, no. Step in the name of love? No, no. It's, it's not listening, listening to the song. song. It's just the song would just pop into my head. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. And, like either it's, ignition. It's like, I mean, you up there? Too? Like, uh, <laughs> let me get that. <laughs> Well, well, so, so for that, that song, song, like, the Dave Chappelle kind of ruined that song for me because, like, every time I sing that song, I just, you got to poop, poop, a little pee, pee. Yeah, drip, drip, drip. drip. Like, that, that ruined that song for me. But, uh, oh, God, what song? Like, I Believe I Can Fly was one of those songs. But then it's also, like, uh, I can't remember the name of the song. Or I can't think of the song I was singing. But I started singing a song. And I was like, fuck, I got to stop because this is our Kelly song. Goddamn fucking pedophile. Like, I got to, I can't support him. Yeah, but just switch to Michael, man. 
<laughs> you know what's funny hey. that you said that, Blue, is that literally, I think it was like maybe four, three or four days ago, I was listening to Sirius XM and like the song came on. I was like, oh, this Isaac Brothers. All right, cool. Listening to it, then R. Kelly came on. I kept like listening to him. I'm like, oh, fuck, it's R. Kelly. God damn it. I had to fucking change it. Like, <laughs> why do they still it have was... this dude on the air? He's a convicted pedophile. How is he it still? Was... He's pulling royalties from this shit. What yeah. the fuck? The song, the song I'm thinking of is trapped, trapped in the closet. closet. That's, that's a that's a, that's, a, that's what it was. Cause that that black opera was it was really fucking good. But god damn it, <laughs> he has residency in my fucking brain, and I don't like that shit. <laughs> so you know what you know what R. Kelly is liking to me is like a modern day Rasputin. Like he was doing fucking foul ass shit, but all these people were like enamored with him. They were like, he's fucking up. It's like yeah, but he has like the ear of the um. The Tsar, I think they used to call it, which is basically the king. And, like, they knew that he was fucking around with these little chicks. So there was, like, a little coup to try to, you know, pull him out of the uh, the palace and shit. It's like Dude, artillery. Again, I'll never forget it again. This was a very different time. It's not going to make any sense to people who are, like, I don't know, 20, in their 20s right now. But there was a time in this country where you could go into any fucking barbershop or like any neighborhood pretty much or beauty salon or whatever and people would be selling dvds like you want to see r kelly piss on somebody and right like, that was just an okay weird thing that was going on i'll never forget and i was like this is fucking odd but it, it literally happened and there was video evidence of it and we all just kind of were like man step in the name of love or most people did I was like, Fuck it. so so how much were they proud of you I didn't pay <laughs> shit. I didn't pay shit. You got it for free. That's what I, that means. Yeah. What <laughs> well, well, no, back back at back at that time, oh, fucking like LimeWire and fucking rap. Oh uh, yeah. Master was fucking hot, so you could download that shit fucking very easily. Yeah, it'll get you a virus. The dorms. It was in the dorms at the AUC. Like people would be like, "You want to see some wild shit?" And, mm-hmm. what the fuck. You know. It was it was a different time, a different era. But yeah, so once again, fuck R. Kelly for having. Oh God, he... the song, his songs were great, but God damn it, <laughs> like they're all they're all so fucking per, pe... fucking pedophilish. <laughs> all pretty much all of them. Like if you listen to the lyrics, you're trapped like, in a closet. Like talking about fucking a little girl. All right, this is gross. Yeah, yeah. dude, you even trapped in a closet. They don't got people trapped in closets and shit. <laughs> yeah, he, he ain't talking about being gay. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. No. Mm-mm. Damn. Yeah. Anyway. All right, sorry. Um, yeah, 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 we need to get off that. Shit. Yeah. yeah, that's gonna piss. Where are we at time wise? Uh, I think we're almost, almost there. Wait, wait for what? Multiverse wait. of Madness. Oh my, trailer is unstable. Uh, oh no! Wait, they got they got a Doctor Strange two trailer? Yes, I I think it dropped today. Oh, okay, so I I saw it. I was like, no, this is some Spider Man shit. So I'm not gonna fucking watch it at all. Hmm. <laughs> How, well, how did the trailer go? I, didn't, I haven't watched it. I don't want to know because it might have shit from the fucking Spider-Man movie. Why yeah, right. Camera, my camera's mm-hmm. tripping. What the fuck is going on here? Yeah, you just look like you're doing a photo shoot. Yeah. Like, well, look- like, nothing's going on. It's like the white balance is like blowing up. Um, I'm going to say not really. It's mostly him. I mean, Wad is in it. Yeah, we so. do that. So there you go. Oh, and also... You see a new character. You see a new MCU character. So, um, it's kind of cool. Help me remember because it's been so many fucking years. Uh, the the brunette doctor or nurse—I can't remember—is is she still his lickety boo or did she die? Oh, Rachel Rachel McAdam. Yeah, uh, she's in the she's in the trailer. Oh, okay, good, good. So uh, yeah, she's I, blonde in the film. I kind of like. Yeah. I liked her more than. Quite a few of the like, uh, like more than Pepper Potts even. I thought she was. I think I thought she brought it. But she's only in one film. I was, yeah, Pepper, Pepper, was, Pepper was trying to sell you some uh, vaginal crystals. That's probably why you didn't like Pepper yeah. Potts. Yeah. Damn. Got a yeah. Pussy, pussy candles and shit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's a weird chick. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, like, what are you talking about? Pro- Look up Gwyneth Paltrow, all right, and fucking. Pussy candles. candles, pussy candles, and and pussy crystals. Like you think mm-hmm. we're joking? Yeah, yeah. That, that literally. 
Now, here's the other thing, dude. Don't forget, this is a multi-million dollar, like, actress. Like, she's not, she's not small time. She's been in a whole she bunch broke. of MCU movies. She's got, and she was in movies before then. She's yeah. not broke, but she wants to be our pussy. I mean, she could be out there selling sex dolls of her pussy. I mean, like uh, Sasha Gray and these other adult actresses. <laughs> but, like, she's a legit... That's, that's a better investment, that's I think. That's the thing that gets me, like... And she's, you know, not no shade, but, like, she's older and established. Like, what the fuck? Why would everybody want to buy your pussy candle? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> See, well, the, people probably yeah, were, were fucking kidding, but... No, yeah, look that shit up. And what's, what's so, so crazy, crazy is that, that shit sold out. out. So there's yeah. a lot of people that want to. Damn. But well, speaking of candles, uh, if you want to get some really great smelling candles, <laughs> it'd be easy. Well, the candles. <laughs> That's a hard transition, bro. Oh, oh man. Clear your soul. <laughs> we, uh, Are they in the chat? <laughs> no, they're probably not in the blood. chat. But if you go on to BG Oil and Candles, you actually get uh, 50%. Off uh, any order over thirty five dollars with the uh, promo code of V is in Victor D is in Delta six three eight and is in November for fifteen percent. And they just order. updated. And they just, they're in the process of updating their website, website, so yes, you want to see some cool fucking shit on their on their page, which is amazing. And we have like we use their on. We don't know what the we actually have our own account. I don't think they're making it right now. They can probably special order for you. No, they are. They'll make it for you. Are they still doing it? Okay. Yeah. But, but it's, uh, it's, it's on their, their page, page or whatever. Yeah, this is our actual candle. So for their labels, there's five different labels, or six different labels, different different labels, different different labels you can get. You can get one of each cast member's names on there, or you get one of just plain old black and black, black, black size infinity, which is kind of cool. And I think you can customize it, too, if you want. If you want to put your own name on there. So, yeah. I, I love our fucking candle, but I will say this. the There's like a sweet potato. Oh, yeah. That shit will make your house smell good as fuck. Yeah. Like, yeah. Smell all homey, like. So yeah, I did, I did a photo shoot for, for their candles and stuff like, like that, and, like, I have one, and, like, it's, it's already gone because I fucking, I burnt. That shit, that shit lasted forever, but it, it didn't last enough for me to keep it inside of my house. But, yeah, it's, it's a great smelling fucking candle. candle. It smells like a sweet, it smells like a sweet potato pie. Like, I feel like, like we should have talked about this like even before like Black Friday because they had sales, a bunch of sales and stuff. Um, and they actually, they're continually improving upon their products. So like the candle I have right now, the ones that I have, they all have like the fabric uh, wick. And the new mm-hmm. candles, they have like this wooden wick, which works way better, pops a little mm-hmm. bit. But it, it, I think it, it burns slower. Yeah, it burns slower and it has like way less smoke, if any at all. And uh, it's fantastic. And it's also... I think it's better for the environment because it's just made out of natural wood. So, there you go. Here's the thing. Christmas is right around the fucking corner. But it's too late to get now. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Put in your fucking order. They'll appreciate it. They'll smell some good shit. And they'll think of uh, how much you appreciated them. So, buy it. Yeah. It's like, look, check this out. If your house stinks and you've been trying to like, you know what? This year, my house is going to smell good. This is the perfect fucking solution for your stinky ass house. Yeah. Buy also, candle, buy candle also, they sell soap. Wash your ass. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah. Damn. They do. They also have a. Uh, when I say wash your ass, I mean bio. literally. Wash your body, mm-hmm. which includes your ass. Yep. Wash your all entire body. So yeah. Two. Your feet, your back, all all that shit. Yeah. Damn. And, Holy shit. I'm looking up this one of the Paltrow shit. She's won an Academy Award, a Golden Globe, two Screen Actor Guilds Awards, and a Primetime Emmy. God dang. But she, wants you, but she wants you to smell her snatch in, in wax form. <laughs> She's saying. Oh, man. Could you imagine if, like, uh, Grace Jones sold her snatch in a kennel form? Bro, she fucking shit. She would fucking get. Nah, bro. Because if, if you see Boomerang, if you saw Boomerang, you expected that. In fact, when the movie was done, you would have went to JC. I bet you people went to JC Penny looking for the perfume that she squeezed out of her stash. Nah, say it right, strong J. Oh, uh, <laughs> damn. That shit was awesome. No, no one would be surprised at all if Chris Jones was doing that. In fact, people would expect that from her. You know what? If, 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 a story, if a story came out right now and said that Grace Jones raped like 35 Uh-oh. dudes, Uh-oh. I wouldn't be surprised or offended. Mm-hmm. Just saying. 
Grace, Grace Jones, Jones was awesome. I, 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 I rap, she's still alive, but Grace Jones, yeah. her day was just hilariously herself. Yeah. <laughs> Grab him and take him. <laughs> Grab it, when she, when the way she said pussy in that fucking fancy ass restaurant to Marcus. What's the matter? You don't like pussy? Yeah. <laughs> no, when she was outing out all those dudes, she's all, no, my brother's gay. He's gay. He's gay. Yeah. That dude's gay. I'm like, holy shit. Yeah, shit was hilarious. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I'm on fucking uh, goop.com, which is Gwyneth Paltrow's like, brand. And goop? The, the amount of shit, like, she went straight fucking uh, Kanye. Maybe Kanye went straight her, but. Uh. Yeah. She's selling like <laughs> shorts, like linen shorts, for two hundred fifty dollars. She has a dress on here that like looks super basic, and it's like a thousand dollars. Yeah, it's like a it's a normal fucking dress for like eleven hundred dollars. Like, fuck? what the fuck is going on here? It's made it's made out of cotton. Yeah, cotton. Like, what the fuck? Who picked the cotton? <laughs> it was was oh, this. So this is what happens when white people pick cotton. It's worth thousand dollars. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we should we should know something was strange with her because God, she, she's the one that she had her, she had her kid Apple and her other kid Moss. So like you know, who did who named their fucking kid Apple? Like what the hell? Hey, but then again, like so when she when she dropped the her vagine candle or her vagina smelling candle, like it's okay. If there was like a meaning behind, it, like okay, women power and stuff like that, I'm like okay. That's cool and all, but like, she she went a little bit deeper with a lot of her shit that she started selling. It's like, it's like, oh yeah, you yeah, you might be out of it. But then again, people are fucking buying it, which is kind of fucking crazy. <laughs> like, look at the prices of this shit. I don't get me wrong. I I spend some money on some shit. Like the the sweater that I'm wearing right now. This is like I think what I bought it was like 250 bucks. But it's made out of merino wool. All right, so this shit literally makes it harder to see me in infrared. And if I jump in the water, it keeps me warm. This this sweater has a purpose. <laughs> like, she has bikini bottoms on here, f- just the bottoms for one hundred and twenty dollars. God, and it's damn. just made out of like basic shit. Like the fuck, man. Jesus Christ, I have a bikini, bro. Grace Jones is seventy three years old. I would and still. I would she still was, love to see her and shit. She. You should see this picture of her from 2015. She's 67 years old. She looks like she's like maybe 30 in this picture. But she still, she has this weird ass mohawk and it looks like a like paper. I don't, I can't it's like a circular mohawk. It's super weird. But it's awesome at the same time. If we had gotten good X-Men movies back in like the late 80s I would love to have her as Storm with the Mohawk Storm. doing all mm-hmm. kind of Grace Jones shit. Talking all kinds of shit. So she does not look 30. I mean, <laughs> she looks good for her age, but she doesn't look 30. Mm, I mean, I guess. I well, that's just old. Everybody. Yeah. I mean, you're the same dude that tried to tell me, that tried to say, actually, I think it was you and Prodigy talking about yeah. how good, you know, Madonna looks today, but it was like the picture that was shown was either, first of all, he was either super photoshopped or she had a significant amount of work done in the past like year and a half oh i'm i'm pretty um, sure she's had a lot of work done but i saw pictures of her like in, in her 50s and she looked much she looked her age at that point damn all right i mean yeah and it, it this is the this is the problem with especially america people have a problem with aging all right you're gonna get fucking old and wrinkly and shit you're not gonna look as good as you used to when you're in your 20s and 30s People that say that, you know, 40 is the new 30 or whatever. No, you're fucking lying. Yes, we look a little better than I guess our parents might have looked back then. But we also have a lot of different shit. But if you look at people in their 20s right now compared to us in our 40s, they look a lot better than we do. Like, duh. Like, <laughs> it's it's okay to age. And I think that people would be a lot uh, better, mental, especially in their mental health-wise, of like being... Better skin regiments. Well, yeah, I mean, always take care of yourself, but, like, just recognize, like, you're aging. Like, it's okay to age. You're going to fucking die someday. This is not new news to any of you. You're going to get old. Mm-hmm. Hopefully you get old and die. But yep. I think we have this thing where not everybody either. tries to look so fucking young. Like, oh, they look so young. And 
You know, everybody's, meanwhile, they're slathering on makeup and getting all this work done on their face, getting fucking tit jobs and dyeing their hair all to look young. But it's like, that's not really what you look like. Like, you look your age if you take away all that stuff. And it's okay to look your age. And if you look your age, you know, I think more people would be okay with, like, accepting how old they actually are. You know, that's my own personal opinion. It's not very popular. But I don't give a fuck. I've got gray hair and... Mm-hmm. My hair's falling out, and I'm fine with that. I don't give a fuck. There you go. You know, it's actually, it's kind of cool to date a girl who who's into makeup because uh, it's almost like you're dating two different people. <laughs> yeah, you have this hot girl, you have this not so hot girl. Damn. She's still hot. How dare you? <laughs> and I'm just saying. All right, all right, guys, let's wrap it on up. Uh, old Ninja, what you got populating this week? Goddamn. Uh, so I just finished Hawkeye not too long ago, so... Hawkeye, I guess they're going to watch the show. Yeah. Was... Yeah, nothing. Yeah, uh, wait, what? No, you, you, you were had nothing. You zapped out. Oh, yeah, because I had, I had this on mute by accident. As a it's like, oh, did it have fucking autism? Oh, not autism. All times. All times. All, all, all times. Time. He's all, all time. It's all, all, all might. might. He's all... <laughs> Yeah, all my so um, old man podcast, I guess. All right. Can you yeah. talk about a story that suck it and start to fall asleep? <laughs> oh damn. Uh, so yeah, I finished Hawkeye. I'm going to start uh, Witcher probably tonight. Um, it's uh, Christmas this weekend, so Merry Christmas to you, Dang. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of about it. <laughs> All right, dude. <laughs> it's funny because he can't tell when he's cutting out. That's the best part. <laughs> yeah. He had some point he should just say, we have no idea. That's <laughs> <laughs> like a little that. mini Thanos blip or something. It's not a snap. Um, <laughs> Blue, what you got popping this week? God damn it. He's cracking up. <laughs> you know, I mean, I'd be crying right now. <laughs> All right. I'll, I'll tell you what I got. All right, so anyway. Uh, my youngest daughter, she got her first, who's five years old, she just turned five, she got her first COVID shot um, today, which was a little difficult, but we got it done. She had a mini freak out, but uh, we got it done. I got my, my booster shot today. Um, I'm fine. She's fine. We'll be fine. Uh, other than that, you know, Christmas is on Friday, right? It's on Friday. Saturday. Saturday. Is it Saturday? Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm yeah. fine now. Um, I got presents, I know that. I mean, I bought presents. I gotta wrap them still and shit. <laughs> and I got K make a present, because her... We got Christmas, and then her birthday is two days later. It's very important, if you have a significant other, don't give them Christmas slash birthday presents. Don't be an asshole. Even if they say, that. you can just... Don't, don't do both. Be the hero of your story. <laughs> Separate both. the presents, goddammit. So yeah, she's, uh, she's got some cool shit that she's got coming um what the fuck did i even get her <laughs> i know i got I, I got like a like a, a super long massage and then something else for her, her actual birthday wait like a, an internal massage n- well i mean we don't talk about <laughs> podcast, but you know yeah. Damn. she's gonna go to a building and it's just gonna be me <laughs> Clap that all down on the table. <laughs> I'm just gonna rent some random office space. <laughs> do uh, what, like what they do in the in the porno? They got the the new the new room massages. The little table mat. <laughs> oh, wait, am I the am I the one that 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 followed the things? The the I only the, watch the ones where they go into the little locker room and there's a hole about waist high. Uh, oh, that's different. Uh, no, I'll talk about the uh, Ultimate Surrender. You, y'all ever watch that shit? They used to have them at um, uh, Kink.com in the in the Armory, which is which is weird because when I went there, I was like, I know this fucking room. <laughs> <laughs> I saw some shit go down in this room. Anyway, you're, you're walking in, you're like, like fucking deja vu. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Smells like baby oil in here. Anyway, um, <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, Christmas is gonna be cool. Uh, I'm glad that my youngest is doing better now. We still got some some healing to do together, but she's doing doing a lot better. Uh, I'm looking forward to just chilling. What's weird is that I'm I'm actually taking no days off um, during the holidays because the days the holidays are on are on days that I don't fucking work anyway. So I'm I'm basically getting paid double time for like 
I think like a week, week and a half. Nice. Because my, my company normally shuts down during the holidays for two weeks. And because it's on days that I don't work anyway, it doesn't really matter. So anyway, they, they got to pay me a bunch of money. So that's good. That's nice. Plus my bonus. That's nice too. Money always works. <laughs> yeah. All right, Blue, what you got? So wait, I, got, I got a shout out to Warrior Fellow right now. He talked about the whole Madonna pose and he said that, uh, damn, Mark Zuckerberg for removing another post that didn't lead to harm. And I think he was talking about the, about the Madonna pose. So I think it's like the one where she's like spread out on the thing. But um, yeah, so, you know, we talked about Christmas is coming up. Um, it's funny because I actually forgot that, that K Max's birthday is in December too, because the Sweetness' birthday is in December. So hers was on the 11th, and yeah, she wanted something, so I kind of tied her gift into Christmas. <laughs> and so Carlos is like, oh, don't do that. But I got her something else for Christmas, and that shit's coming. But um, actually, it's not, you know, Christmas is coming. I'm not really expecting too much for Christmas. Like, I'm not, uh, I'm not looking forward to anything, like, gift or anything. I'm just mainly focused on our kid because this is his first Christmas. But it's hard because, like, with the kid... With like a, a, like a, a baby, like what, what is it that you can get him? Like there's nothing that can really, that he would enjoy. I mean, very limited to what he would want. I think I feel like maybe like maybe when he's one or two, maybe he more enjoy would enjoy Christmas. But um, yeah, it's just it's this is it's, it's interesting. Like I like I want to buy him the world. Like I want to buy him everything he like I could possibly get him. But it's like. What's, What's going to help him develop and become a, a better fucking person, basically, is what I'm looking at. Um, but right now, like, he had his, like, he's nine months now. He's officially, like, he was nine months uh, five days ago from the time this podcast was recording. And, uh, yeah, like, we went to the doctor, and they, they do, like, this nine-month wellness check on him. And the doctor was like, oh, is he, is he, is he sitting up? Like, is he able to support his, like, like, when he sits on his butt, like, and... Like, is he able to hold his back up? I'm like, oh, yeah, he can do that. I put him down, and the kid was, like, slouching and put his hand on the fucking table. I was like, holy shit. <laughs> this doctor thinks this kid's fucking, like, he's not he's not at his potential. But it was like, okay, it, this whole time, it's his nap time. I'm like, okay, that's why he's like this. And then we're in a different room than he's normally in for his checkups. Like, he's sitting inside of the crease. I'm like, okay, like, this kid could sit up, like, no problem. And I, when I bring him home... He sets up perfectly. I think, like, he was just fucking stage shy or something like that. But, like, there's other different milestones, like, Dr. was testing before, like, him may be able to, like, pit, like, bang blocks together or be able to, like, um, like, if there's something, if there's, like, a towel over an object, like, he knows, like, that the object is still there. So he just got to move the towel. And, like, all this shit, like, opened my eyes to, like, a bunch of things. It's like, fuck, man, like, we're trying so hard to keep him, like, up to date with, like, these different milestones. So, now we're we're working with him on certain things and like we're trying to like he we're trying to get him to walk like he's very so when a baby before a baby walks they start to crawl and he's like he just started crawling like he's doing he's still doing army crawl where he's on his elbows but every now and then he'll go into his palms and start and start crawling but um when they start to walk they they're, they start to like pull themselves up onto things and he's starting to do that right now too but uh um, there's this thing called where they where they start to uh, creep, where they will kind of walk, like they'll be on the couch and kind of like scoot themselves along the couch to get from here to there. And he's slowly starting to get that down. So we brought him an activity center thingy. So he's, he's like, he'll stand up on his own and we'll just play with this thing like nonstop, which is kind of cool. But like, yeah, yeah. And so like, and also like, um, we'll, instead of like, like we won't pick him up anymore and like take him to a certain place like that like we'll actually will hold his hands and like let him walk to different parts of the rooms now but then like <laughs> it's really fucking funny because like he can crawl now like he he figured out because uh Cronus got us a little play crowd thingy where you, you can like if i open up the door he figure out how to get out the door and so he can like crawl around the house so he's actually able this is actually the last couple of weeks has been the first time actually exploring the whole entire fucking house like he's been into my office into the bedroom he's been into the kitchen like on his own but he discovered we have a, a robot vacuum cleaner sorry <laughs> i know we're we're running really short on time and stuff like that but like he just like he he's always seen the robot vacuum cleaner like he's like i'll be holding him and the, the vacuum cleaner be like vacuuming or whatever not he's always like looking at it like this and that but he knows exactly where it is 
So every time we will let him, like, leave the, the door open for him to, like, crawl or whatever, he would just instantly bolt to where that thing is and start fucking with it. Like, it's not just, he's not just sitting there, like, you know, push it in, this, that. He will, like, climb onto it and push the fucking button to turn it on. Like, like he knows, like, okay, if I hit this button, it's going to turn on and it's going to, like, scoot around and, like, he grab onto it and move around with it. Like, I, like the whole... So the whole reason why they have the whole like blanket over an object is so that kids know that like um, it's a object awareness. The basic op- the basic the baby knows that like okay, even though this object isn't in my sight, it still exists, and he knows that like okay, if I move this object over from over it, the item's gonna be there. But this my my son he knows that the back cleaner is there, and he knows that there's a guitar in my office because like he will come into my office and peek around the door and. Like, I'm gonna turn, turn my camera around. My guitar in my office, it's it's high up. It's, it's like on the top of a shelf. He will come into my office and look up. Like he will look up at it. Like he will like every time he comes in here. He look like I have like my bike is in here. I have a TV, my desk. I have all these monitors and computers stuff like that. He will instantly come into the room and look up at the guitar. Like, and I would have to lift him up and bring him up to the guitar for him to play. Like. I bring it down for him to play with it, but like he's always looking for this guitar whenever he comes to my office. So I think he has the idea and concept of spatial, or not spatial awareness, but uh, object of um, object awareness. But uh, yeah, it's just it's just interesting watching this little kid just grow. Like it's 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 so it's so much fun. Like I wish I would have done this earlier, but then again, like I'm having so much fun with him right now. Like it's it's a blast and like. Um, I don't know. It's if you if you never want to have a kid and want to wait till you're more financially stable and stuff like that, definitely do that. But it's definitely a lot of fun having a little kid. Like if you want to, if you if you were hoping for a girl and end up having a boy, you know, boys are fun. It's it's fun having a little boy because they're they're so fucking cute and you can do all this fun stuff. But yeah, that's about it for me. All right. Awesome. Uh, I ain't got shit except for definitely going to catch up on some Witcher. I'll do that, and I'm going to watch this goddamn Matrix movie. I'd love to get down on some, uh, some Cold War zombies, maybe over the long weekend. We'll see. Uh, and some Back for Blood. Hold him to take us out, goddammit. Huh? Oh, uh, yeah. So, you just experienced Black and Black Times Infinity? Infinity. You can check us out anywhere and everywhere with Bees and BTI on the internet. It's B T H A N B T I. You can email us Bees and BTI at gmail.com. Uh, you can check out our official website, binheadproductions.com forward slash Bees and BTI. And we have a Discord server. Email us. Let us know you want to join. We'll let you in. It's a lot of fun. Let me tell you guys. There you go. Let, let us in like the throat goat did. Damn. <laughs> Uh, happy holidays, Merry Christmas. Feliz uh, Navidad. Yeah. Happy Kwanzaa. Happy Hanukkah. Quish from Hanzo Kwanzaa. Puff up your penguin next to you. Give him a big hug. Next time, Tactical, ask for a Wendy. <laughs> <laughs>